Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew and Scaring the Cats, <laughs> where we play the newest games. What is it? Your best source for the newest Atari 2600 <laughs> the cat, homebrew. The cat distracted the cat you. He jumped right up the moment I, I you was, started speaking. He freaked out. <laughs> I was speaking way too loud and he went, oh, <laughs> and now he's gone. Now he's gone. You might have seen him in the it's, cat cam for back, two seconds. Come back, Pixel. <laughs> come back, Pixel. Cue the host and the remote host. And... Um, Welcome to everybody here. We have a very special show today. It is a little out of the ordinary. My co-host has left. Oh, the oh, oh, he caught an uh, he caught an Atari. He was here. He was just in the hallway. Oh, yes. that's why. Yes. So, welcome to the show tonight. Is all going to be all about oh. this, uh, the plus Ooh. cart. It's and the magic contained within it. Nice. And we'll find out all about the magic inside the plus cart and what it can do uh, throughout the show. Because mm -hmm. um, that's all we're going to be doing. It's talking about this. And at the end of the show, we'll be playing the first Atari 2600 game mm. ever on the internet through a console. This oh. is the first time. Really? Outside of the testers and really? people who made it, of course. Very cool. Because... <laughs> I didn't make it. If I made it, then I could say, yes, it's the very yes. first time ever. But even yeah. then, I would test it. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> that all of you see. Yeah. Um, it's very exciting. So, um, And there's been a lot of behind-the-scenes development going into this mm -hmm. cart. This essentially connects the 2600 to the Internet and opens up a world of possibilities of what it can do. Mm. Um and there's been um, some development in in trying to uh, get those things going and provide examples of it. That's so cool. that's what we're going to look into okay. tonight. Very and cool. See that little symbol? It's the Wi-Fi yep. symbol. Wi-Fi. That's pretty much what it does. That's so it, crazy. It puts Wi-Fi on a cart and puts it on an on an Atari. On an Atari twenty six hundred. <laughs> that's insane. Um, I love it. And it's all thanks to Al Nefer, mm. who's in the chat here tonight from Very Germany. Cool. And it's up very late there. Mm. <laughs> He's going to be up very late, but he says he has um, slept today, so he's going to be able to make it, hopefully. Yeah. Um, so the games we're going to be playing today is a variety of games, but it's they're all going to be through the Plus Cart, uh, which cre was created by Wolfgang Stubik, who is Al Nefer. But I want to thank all the Twitch subscribers who are scrolling down that side of Tanya. Al Nefer right at the top. <laughs> Been saying his name for months and months and months. Mm -hmm. Armscar Coder, uh, Caffeman 2D, Captain Classic, Catalogs, Coconut 81, Dianoid, Daniel Medina 2600, Drexel, Ament, and Drexel is going to make an appearance later in the show. Mm -hmm. Remotely. Uh, Manuel Ferreira, Glenn Main, Ground Trooper, Azure Rapper 2600, Johnny WC 23, Jupiter Storm, Carl G. Croco 2600, Mark Space Inc., Metal Atari 1969, Metal Lunar 7, Miss Command, MK Smith, Mr. Fix, Muddy Funster, Nathan Strum, Packer, VG, Coog 2600, RC 70, Repentless VG 6 Suite, Sir Cat Leg, Smitty B 7800, Socrates 0603, Spartan 581, Spiceware, The D Train 37, The Welsh Man 89, Thunkus, Tiki Dan K, Tim of Legend, and Trek MD. And you can support the show and subscribe for free too if you link your amazon prime to your twitch prime and click subscribe and you'll get your name read off and you can say present like metal atari <laughs> 1969 like roll call at school roll call yeah present yeah bueller bueller, bueller. <laughs> <laughs> and i don't know the rest of that little speech that uh that girl gives I heard he was at 31 flavors, and then he ate one, and then he got really sick, and then he died. I know something about... Then he about, came back to life. Yeah, and, like, something about kidney disease. I remember that. Yes. He needed a kidney from we someone. We need to raise money for him. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Anyway. Um, and I have sure, to watch that movie again. I haven't watched that movie in forever. quite well-crafted. Yeah, in forever. So. I'll also be sure to make sure you subscribe and click like and on all the things. Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, so you can see when episodes go up. Or their special episodes. And thank you very much, Estramir's 2008, Yay. for subscribing. Yeah, that's... 16 months. Nice. Ooh, he wasn't on the list. There you go. Yep. Now you will be on the this, list. See, that's... Oh, that's... Metal Atari 1969. <laughs> just, uh, oh, and they were on the list, so they've just added. There you go. 16 months. Oh, my God. Yep. Oh, my God. Sounds like the kid from Kids in the Hall. That's probably who I was channeling. Yeah. That's one of my favorite <laughs> characters on Kids in the Hall. What Which is one? his name? Uh, Gavin. Gavin. He wears the baseball cap. Okay, yeah. And he's got a backpack on it all is the it, time. Is that Bruce McCullough? Bruce McCullough. Okay. 
how much does my head weigh? You <laughs> could cut it off and put it on a scale. <laughs> so good. Oh, um, kids in the hall. The three in your three pixel cam overlay is four pixels. <laughs> the three, is it? Where is it? Oh, it is four pixels. That's really funny. Oh, it's not a three. It's an, it's an and. It's a very strange ampersand. Oh. An and. Um, the Atari, so Atari and, pic and Pixel Cam. It's just a funny looking and. Very strange font. That is funny. But, and obviously it doesn't make any sense because no. it looks like a three. It looks like a three, yeah. And the M is five. Yeah. It's not a proper font. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a made up font. Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, also doesn't have perfect spacing. You know, it's, it's meant to have um, proper kerning. Mm. So it's not spaced out. You know, eight, 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 or five, 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 yeah. five. Yeah. yeah. Um, car no. troubles, Arena Foot. That's oh, terrible. No. I was going to say, sorry, you yep. you were talking about um, a lot of things. <laughs> no, but you. We just watched a, a video clip of an SNL sketch yesterday, all about um, fonts. Fonts, <laughs> which was... is the one with um, Ryan Gosling in it. Yes. Where he complains about how uh, the papyrus uh, font on the Avatar films. On the Avatar films. <laughs> super geeky it's so funny but it's really your really comments good. about your font just reminded me of that completely because uh, james was killing himself laughing watching it about the <laughs> fonts and like why yeah. would they use that font why, why? <laughs> then they use comic sans at the end oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah which great. is it's the awesome. bigger joke yeah anyway uh, i digress sorry that just jumped into I'm my head i'm a perfectionist head. about this because the plus cart font is bound to three pixels wide full stop <laughs> yeah so yeah i, I read uh in the forums andrew yeah. davies perfecting the font oh it's just yeah. leaning oh. against the picture it's driving me crazy there we go yeah fonts oh. okay come down <laughs> fonts pillows yep um, His list of, uh, so Atari Age just recently announced today, yesterday actually, in the newsletter, and then posted today about it, um, two more games for the 2600 that are going to be released in box form, because they have a box. Um, Cannon Head Clash and Hugo Hunt. Remember Hugo Hunt, which is the puzzle game where you have to do in a certain number of moves oh, and you yes. pick up the dots and yes. you can move some more. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then Cannon Head Clash by Blue Swimmer where you, the guy's on either side and you're going doo -doo -doo -doo, shooting, shooting mm. over and over. Very fun games. Mm. Yeah. So those are added to the huge list of games that are going to be released very soon. He says October. October. So yeah, the, cool. that brings the list that I'm keeping track of because <laughs> uh, nowhere it's posted fully. Hmm. supposedly these are being released because i think these are have been all of these have been officially announced by al in some form for the 2600 it's going to be avalanche cannon Ed clash daredevil deep stone catacomb hugo hunt ninja sky and low res world pit cat box and manual only hmm. panic rooms robot city the end tower of rubble venture reloaded and zookeeper 13 new 2600 games coming in october and then for other systems uh, Adventure 2 XE, Dragon's Cash, Magical Fairy Force. Oh, hype train. Whatever that means. <laughs> <laughs> Things are always happening in Great Twitch. Defender, gifting a tier one sub to Dr. Moo Cows. Oh, Ooh, excellent. Nice. Says you have limited time to ex learn ex Earn emotes. Oh, that's all crazy stuff. Yeah. Uh, Dragon's <laughs> Cash, Magical Fairy Force for the 5200. Mm. Rebooted, which is a game compilation for the Jaguar. Mm. Scramble for the XE, Last Strike for the Jaguar, Rebooted for the Jaguar, and Xenon 2, which is a reissue for the Jaguar. Nice. So much stuff coming out. That's all the news I have, because it's a big show today. Big, big, big show with lots of information. So, what is... What is this? What is the plus card? So, uh, Wolfgang sent to, this to me a little while ago. It's pretty much an Uno cart. It's over there. I'm not going to get it. Oh. Everybody knows what an Uno cart looks like. Mm. Um, I will get it. Um, so it's pretty much an Uno cart mm. with a Wi Fi adapter yes. in it. Yeah. So it's kind of the basics of an Uno cart inside, mm. add and an Uno, um, a Wi Fi adapter added to it. Mm. Um, what can it do right now? If you uh, get one, 
from uh, Alnifer. It can download binaries and files. It's not just games it can do mm. deal with. Right now it can do some other stuff as well. Um, over the internet, um, it can play games that you've uploaded to your own directory mm. that are private. Yeah. Um, or browse other people's directories, like the main um, directory of games. Okay. Um, so they're upkeeping games that are being released, work in progress games. So you games. can access it rem like yeah. on someone's server kind of yeah. thing? Yeah, on, yeah. on the uh, Plus Store server. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to download these. They're updated automatically by wonderful volunteers. Nice. So you don't have to, like, they're just all there. Yeah. You don't have to download them, keep track mm -hmm. of them. You just turn it on and there's a huge list. Um, and also it can submit your high scores automatically to a high scoreboard mm. if those games are enabled with high score with high score and we're going to be playing through those games that have the mm. high scores enabled because they actually have to change the game to enable that because otherwise it's just a normal game um gifted a sub to a random follower mm -hmm. thank you very much great offender that's a wonderful thing to do mm -hmm. to dr mook house who has been watching quite a lot in the past yeah. couple months. Pick me, lol. <laughs> pick me, pick me. Um, uh, what could it do in the right hands with uh, somebody who's uh, very clever and a good programmer? Um, pretty much anything you can do on the internet. So you could browse the internet through a... A browser on your Atari. A browser on your That's Atari. That's hilarious. I love it. Good luck to that. Probably Wik Wikipedia is probably the best a representation of what you could look at. Could you look at photos? You couldn't get no. photos. It would have to just be you could, old, but old GeoCities web pages. <laughs> <laughs> I don't little, know what you could tiny, do. Yeah. You know, twenty by twenty pixel <laughs> things. I mean you could do a ninety six pixel like graphic. It's yeah. poss it's totally possible yeah. to look at graphics, but yeah. I I wouldn't I would stick to the text really. Um you could chat Mm. on something like the Atari Age Discord chat mm. Mm. Um, or other chat things. You can tap into the IRC or... That's, yeah. You, if, you know, you got the right uh, things, you could browse Facebook or other social media things, get yeah. a message. I don't know. Uh, no, there's no web browser yet. But this yeah. is in the right hands. This is a, you know, if somebody wanted to make these, you it's totally possible. You could probably theoretically do it. So You could yeah. play multiplayer games. Possibly, yeah. Either real-time <gasps> or turn-based. Could you play... Um, 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 the Chess? One, the one with the... No, <laughs> yes. with the, the paddles. Um, oh, any of them? Pong? <laughs> Not Pong, but the one with the four, four oh. people. Um, uh, te technically, yes. Yeah, in yes. theory. Yeah. It might not be very responsive, but yeah. Chess pro his uh, Dandrew Davies chess program may use it to play correspondence chess. Oh. So that's also a possibility. Very cool. Where it's uh, turn based, you know, mm. one person, then the next person, then mm -hmm. the next person. It easily handle that. Easily handle that. Real time is dependent on a lot of things. The, yeah. The power of this, the speed of your internet, your, wow. uh, where you're connecting to, all those things. Yeah. Nice, nice. Um. And just about anything else you can think of that an Atari can handle mm. and you can transfer over the internet. Um, mostly games is usually what. Oh, you missed the train. The hype train is long gone. <laughs> uh, I think if enough people do something. It keeps it going. Give bits. Uh, and, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I just ignore it. We've, we've, uh, you get gifts or something if you, uh, if you, if you do things. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. It's, For it. the browser, I can't imagine something. More than a BBS board. A BBS board, yeah. Massive yeah. multiplayer turn-based dungeons. Yeah. <laughs> or real real time. Like not not real time moving, but like say um tile based. Which is a lot easier to handle because it's just you move, have, like, move, move. Um D and D, like the dungeon master, like a typable yeah. you're going back and forth. Yeah, you could have yeah. lines of typing, you yeah. got the name and then what they say. Yeah. And then you can move people around. Yeah, yeah. That would be pretty fun. Uh, there are perfectly good text-based text browsers, browsers already. Yep. So you can model them after yep. that and look of what they've done. That's very fun. Um, and Wolfgang wanted to mention a couple of names right off the top and, okay. and thank them. Go for um, it. Thomas Yanch, <laughs> who, has done, uh, who has done the VCS part of the new 32-character menu. Uh, Atari Age user Priz, uh, Prizrak, who's doing a great job in organizing and updating the ROMs in the Plus Store. Like I said, some great volunteers. 
Um, and Andrew Davey, who is testing a lot and has done a beautiful 3D case uh, for the Plus card, which we may take a look at later. Um, so when uh, Alnifer posted about the Plus card, he posted about it uh, publicly October 12, 2019 in the Atari Age forum. He said the Atari 2600 Plus card is based on Robin Edwards' Uno Kart 2600 and the extensions of Dirty Harry's Fork. The Plus Kart has no SD card like this, but has an ESP8266 to connect to a local Wi-Fi network and the internet. Uh, the Plus Kart downloads the ROM files from a server in the internet called the Plus Store. Okay. That's where all the, all the, the ROMs sit. Okay. Um, the way this is done is similar to the way the Uno card 2600 loads ROMs from the fat file table, a fat file system on the SD card while the VCS is performing a wait routine in RAM. Additionally, the plus card has one more interesting feature. It offers internet access to ROM developers. Those functions are called plus ROM. In the first bytes of a plus ROM, the path and the back end host name or IP address has to be encoded, both strings terminated by a slash zero. Sending and receiving bytes to the host does not need a wait routine in the VCS RAM. At the moment, the plus ROM functions can be used 2K, 4K, 3F, 3E, 3E plus cartridges, and any standard bank switching cartridge with or without 128 bytes of RAM, etc. etc. Read, oh, there's many specs online. Not going to get into the hardware too deep or the software programming too deep mm -hmm. in this. It's more about what an end user would experience. Mm. Um, so he says, no, so all kinds of online ROMs, games, chat clients, mail clients, web browser, MMOGs, etc., should be possible mm. with the Atari 2600 VCS. Cool. <laughs> uh, does ZPH only stream at 1080? Sometimes only. It depends what uh, Twitch allows mm. at the time. Someone was saying they can't get you on Chromecast, but I think I've gotten you on Chromecast before. Yeah. I mean, it broadcasts at 1080p60, and some TVs can't handle that. Some Chromecasts mm, can't it's handle the, that. Yeah. Because if you've got an old, old Chromecast, Chromecast, it only does 30 frames a second. Oh, because yeah. we have a newer, not the newest one, but we have a newer one. And Newish, it, and we not can new. And we, we can watch it. It yeah. does work, yeah. Um, yeah. So the Wi-Fi chip in it, the ASP8266, is a low-cost Wi-Fi microchip with a full TCP IP stack. Uh, the small module allows microcontrollers to connect to a Wi-Fi network and make simple TCP IP connections using Hayes style commands. The very low price and the fact that there are very few externals components on the module, um, which suggests that it could be eventually used, eventually be inexpensive in volume and attracted many hackers to explore the module. This is from Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. So uh, my history of getting the plus cart, uh, he sent me two of them. Mm -hmm. um, I, we've, I first started talking to Al in April 10th, 2010, 20, about featuring them on the mm -hmm. show. And then I got the carts on April 24th and I got it working on September 3rd. <laughs> so April to September took a, while. Uh, took a while to get it working. And there's a very stupid reason behind that mm. uh, and very simple solution, but I couldn't figure it out. Mm. Um, I did talk about it last episode because um, I've been planning to do this for a while, for half a year, yeah. <laughs> <the show. laughs> yeah. but it kind of hinged on me getting this working. Yeah. I try to connect up over and over and over and over, and it just wouldn't work. And I was be, I was giving given lots of help from Al Nefer, uh, Wolfgang, mm -hmm. and nothing I did worked. It just would fail constantly. And then I was just playing around with the router the other day, really like a week ago, mm -hmm. and I, for some reason I changed the name of the router um to something else something easier uh and then it worked it connected up and it's because i had very you had weird characters weird characters in the name of the because i have a, a silly name for the router yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's just fun a fun name but it has non-alphanumeric characters mm -hmm. in it um so that's what was holding it back it was expecting alphanumeric or at least not the ones I had in it. Yeah, yeah. And from then on, I scaled back all the things that I did to make it work and got it down to, like, two things I need to change if I want to get it working. Okay, well, that's yeah. good. So, but, yeah. But, but something that simple takes forever to figure out. And it's also because I wasn't about to start saying to everyone the name of my router. 
No. <laughs> and you'll see that going onwards because I will have to censor some of this. Oh, I see. That I'm going to be broadcasting because it shows the name of my router and the names of all the routers the, our... the plus cart can see. Oh, so in, 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 in our neighborhood too. Yeah. And there yeah, are maps great. online. Oh, really? That you type in router names. And it'll tell and you. And it shows you on the map. Oh, really? Where it is. Wow. Um, I didn't know that was the thing. And yeah. Uh, yeah. You don't want that. No. It's good knowing these things. Yes, it is good knowing these things. You have a good knowledge of... of uh... Well, I've, I've been, you know, reading about hacking for so long. And I, yeah. I, I'm very interested in those types of things and security. Yeah. Um, so I, I know these little tidbits and yeah. know how to protect myself from things. Yeah. Hacks. <laughs> yeah. And um, oh, uh, Andrew Davey said he was going to DDoS me tonight. <laughs> and I was like, hmm. Thanks, not. Andrew Davey. <laughs> yeah. And and technically you have to think about these kind of things when you're connecting up your hardware. Yeah. An Atari. <laughs> An Atari, yeah, exactly. <laughs> which now is technically possible to DDoS. To, 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 to DDoS. And, and hack into Atari. this this is a, a system oh. with storage that ha is programmable. Yeah. And I mean, the Atari itself doesn't remember anything if you turn it off. But mm. this in the Atari, you could, I don't know, do bit mining, Bitcoin mining. I don't know. Bitcoin don't know. mining with the Atari? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, you're opening up a whole new world. <laughs> That's right. You could do Bitcoin mining. It's Atari coin there. and it's only Ataris mining the internet. Do you want to get in? <laughs> I love it. Do you, do you want to get in all the newspapers around the world? Yeah. Tomorrow, make, uh, make a bit Bitcoin miner yes. for the plus card <laughs> and get it running on a 2600 that gives some display and you will be in every newspaper <laughs> in the whole world. Oh my for sure. gosh, that would be hilarious. Because it's just the two things together. Would, are just hilarious. People wouldn't be able to resist but writing about it yeah. and a new story about it. And it's already 2600 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Atari coin. Atari coin. Coined here. Coined here. There you go. Atari coin. That's right. Yep. We can start our own coin. Our, our own our own virtual currency. <laughs> but it has to be made on Atari. You can't use yes. a computer to do it. No. No. <laughs> yep. But actually. Right? Rather easy. <laughs> there you go. Go for it, Andrew. Uh, you. <laughs> so uh, use the yeah. I, I, there's an ARM processor in here, so it's not unpowerful. It's just not very powerful. Yeah. But it's, you know, something. It's not a 2600. You would use the arm in it to do it. Yeah. yeah. No. And the 2600 just... to display. Yeah. Yeah. Does an Atari have, have a coin? Yeah. Maybe. Um, so, talking about um, game downloading systems for yeah. the Atari, mm -hmm. there were actually two other, three other, actually, Atari 2600 game downloading services back in the 80s. Really? Yes. In the 80s? In the 80s. <laughs> wow. So we're going to take a look at those. Okay. Uh, the first one, uh, not in any order because they all came out around the same time and one actually came out and two or other were in development. Mm -hmm. So this one uh, didn't come out. Uh, it was the Electronic Pipeline EPS. Um, and uh, let's see, it was joint, a joint venture between Atari and Activision. Imagine those two actually agreeing on something. In 1983, uh, called Electronic Publishing Systems, EPS, they developed the Electronic Pipeline, a game service for which the Atari VCS 2600 was to sell wireless game cartridges, like this, uh, which users could select and play up to 40 different games each month for a low monthly subscription fee. A uh, TV commercial was created for it, and the service was in alpha testing for a mere four days from installing the transmission equipment uh, in the first test market when it was indefinitely postponed due, due to Warner's sale of Atari in 1984. So how that worked is you had a cartridge just like this, and it had no plugs whatsoever in it, mm. and they were going to insta install things that were similar to cordless telephones. Okay. That would transmit the information probably in a loop because okay. I doubt this would transmit back. Yeah, just one way. It might be two ways to verify. I don't know. It doesn't have a lot of details. Mm. I'm sure you can find out about it. Um, so 
yeah, you would get the cartridge, you plug it in, and you would have access to all these um, systems. So we're going to take uh, all these games, 40 a month, and they'd be on a rotating basis. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take a look at the commercial for it right now. Okay. For a thing that never came out. Um, and it is the um, EPS, Electronic Pipeline. So short, awkward pause while I load it up. <laughs> oh my, that looks rough. Yeah. <laughs> well, how many people were recording this with the VCR or had yep. access to oh, this? Oh, VCRs. Yeah, they're beta machines. Uh, there we go. And I'm going to turn it down, way down, because I'm going to blast your eardrums. Okay, here we go. Flip it over. Oh, that didn't work so well. It didn't flip over. Uh, I didn't flip over, and also it was way too low, and this is way too low too. So let's just adjust that again. Try it again. Now, that's what that the electronic pipeline for your 2600. Calm down. Okay, okay. You get this adapter for the Atari 2600, and zap! You're in the electronic pipeline. Pipeline? Uh, video game service that brings you 40 games. The for Wait, <laughs> the electronic <laughs> pipeline. It's like the this elect information super highway. highway. Yeah. But that really didn't exist. This is eighty three. No, this it didn't. Eighty three. No, it like, didn't. People started talking about that in the nineties, early nineties. Yes. So it's just very similar. Anyway. Oh, that's so crazy. Nine ninety five. Come on. And the adapter? Oh, thirty nine ninety five. We'll save on twitches. What's wrong with the games you have already? Oh, but these games they change weekly, you know, and there's sneak previews, and new games from the arcades. What about hooking it up? No hookup, no cable. Sounds good. And mom says it's okay with her if it's okay with you. Well, we'll see. Oh boy, Martha, he said I could. I guess it's this their tar target demographic. He's oh, you can't see it right now. There. Uh, anyway, in behind me had a reel to reel recorder. So it's oh. like this kid had some money. This, yeah, this yeah, family yeah, yeah. had some money. This, <laughs> and his room was just Decked littered out. with Electronic stuff. Electronic pipeline. Get 40 games a month. Let's see what games. No! Go back. Games. So Beam Rider, Stargate, nice. Taz, Centipede, Decathlon, Enduro, Hero. Nice. Joust, Just. Jungle Hunt, Kangaroo, Mario Brothers. Oh, you could get Nintendo mm. games. <laughs> <laughs> a month. Call 800 Hot Games. Play sneak previews. Oh, 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 that's more. Hey, B hey, Rider. B Rider. Okay. Uh, stop it there. Okay. Centipede, let's see. Millipede, Minor 24 Niner, uh, Part 1. Moon Patrol, Pigs in Space, Pitfall, Cubert. Sneak previews. Was there one more below that? Because it scrolled up pretty fast. Let's see. Oh, River Raid. Nice. Suffered like a millisecond. There we go. River Raid. Okay. And Pitfall. Hot Games. Hot games. Oh, some more. Uh, Robot Tank, Sorcerer's Apprentice, which Space is a Disney uh, oh, game. Oh, interesting. Uh, Space Invaders. Weekly. Sorcerer's Apprentice is actually a really cool Hot Games. And Hot Games. You're in the electronic pipeline. <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> You're in the electronic pipeline. Wow. Awesome. That is. Um, so that was the first one that never came out. How dare they steal my 800 hot games? <laughs> That's right. That was great. That was so good. Um, and then the other one was Game Line Master Module, which actually did come out. Mm. Um, Miss Command mentioned Game Line there too. Yeah. So this is the one everybody knows about. Um, game Line was a dial up game distribution service so a lot of these early ones were either dial up yeah. or they connected up to your cable line as well and they could send uh the games over a uh, frequency and okay. just listen on that frequency and translate this it. just seems like crazy to me in in the early 80s it all like that, that technology was around yeah yeah wow like one was wireless that last one was that one was wireless it delivered it wirelessly into your house that's crazy <laughs> did it work though it never existed it was, Four days away from release. But it... Four oh, days. Oh, I see. But it, so it never came out, but... Wow. Yeah. Uh, game Line was a dial-up game distribution service. Which gotcha. Which plenty fast for 2,600 games. 
Uh, developed and operated by Control Video Corporation, subscribers could install the proprietary modem and storage cartridge in their home game console, accessing the game line service to download games over telephone line. Uh, it was originally envisioned not to provide just games, but also news, stock quotes, sports reporting and scores, mm -hmm. electronic mail. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, online banking in 83, 84. That's mind blowing. Mm. I think it was over. I don't even know if it was over the phone very much in 83. That's really early. Um, online wow. forums and a wide variety of information, including airline schedules, horoscopes, classified ads. Wow. Um, uh, game line ceased operations before any of these expanded services were offered, though stock line and sports line were reportedly near complete implementation. Um, it, I, I went to Europe in 2003 okay. and they still had that, those screens. I don't know if you ever saw them. I'm sure lots of on people TV. from Europe. On TV? On TV, where they were yeah. ask, kind of ASCII and you could, they drew pictures with them um, and you could type in things with your remote yes and interact with no because because uh i have i have a lot of family europeans in are like yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, um what are they i can't even remember what it was called but i remember that and you would go to a channel and you could type things in and look things up and yeah you look and, up weather and sports and i was like this is so cool why don't we have this in north america like it was really yeah. cool that you we could had get channels and they just scrolled things no but this was weather. interactive yeah this was yeah. a two-way yeah. maybe not two-way you kind of probably tapped into a, a, a menu frequency or a something menu, a menu structure but yeah. um but i remember that i remember i remember my aunts having that in the, on their tv mm -hmm. and like wow that's really cool mm -hmm. yeah. oh yeah it was really really cool and i think i saw it like it it's dying stages and i was I playing with it it was all in german because i was in germany 99 98 99 oh okay. i think they had it yeah yeah update fail web tv okay um, uh so we're going to take a look at not a commercial but what the what the interface looked like mm. for game line game line it, okay because there wasn't a commercial or maybe there was a commercial but it's not on the internet um so this is what game line looks like control video corporation So you would type in your ID, your three digit ID, which doesn't nice. seem very uh, well, well, it probably coincided. It was more like a pin that also worked with your cartridge mm. so that you don't just type in I'm user one, two, three, and then you have access to user one, two, three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, and then uh, they blank the player name, mm -hmm, which is hilarious. Uh, and then you select a game and they select at 683. And then it would do some fake tones for sure, because you're already. Or maybe you wouldn't be connecting. No. No, you wouldn't be connecting. But that's not DTMF. That's just garbage. <laughs> They're just faking it. And they picked Cosmic Arc, a very good choice. <laughs> uh, by a magic. Uh, I guess it gave a little title screen because that's not part of the game. Mm. And then it's. Oh, this is just a demo. This is happy birthday. All of your play is free today. <laughs> so I guess you played, you paid by the by dial download up, or dial by up, the download. Yeah. 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 I guess you would do it on a per game basis. Like yes. I want to play Cosmic Arc, Arc today. It's a dollar or 50 cents because those games were 30 to $50 back then. Yeah. Yeah. So if you think, I no idea. if no. I pay a dollar, that's like I can get the equivalent of, of 30 plays in uh, a month or yeah. whatever yeah as opposed to buying one game or you can mm. try out games yeah mm. so that's the end of that uh little thing so it didn't actually show the game but we know what the games look like so that's probably why they didn't have it um and the third service um was being developed by parker brothers um and was going to launch a cable delivery service so oh all three were very cable. different yeah wow and i know a lot of uh like uh i think the genesis had one that was through cable mm. and other systems like i was going to do research on those but it got went way off topic yeah like, who cares? <laughs> there's a, every, almost every system after this yeah. had something some kind like, of dial-up or dial-in service yeah where you had a cartridge 
Mm. And you could download it. It plugged into your telephone line. Probably not any wireless ones. I hadn't th- heard of any of those wireless ones. Well, wireless came a lot later, so. Yeah, uh, that was very ambitious because you'd have to put tons of them around the city. Yeah. Um, so it was either dial-up or it was cable. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it was going to be called Pro. Well, the name was Project Zelda, which was not the name. Uh, top secret plan to distribute games online uh, via cable, mm. and you can look it up online if you want. Uh, never had cable TV in uh, uh, Australia. Oh, it seems like a really odd thing to base a product on. Mm. Yeah, it would do better in North America. Mm. Um, because in Europe, too, they did a, a lot of it was over the air. Yeah. So it probably would only really work in, in uh, the U.S. and yeah. Canada. Yeah. Um, so now we get into the plus card. Now I'll give a little history lesson. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what... There's three ways you can get this going. Um, one, well, you plug in the cartridge, and um, we will probably take a look at that right now, actually. Let's switch over. Okay. So which one do I have in? Okay, we're going to do this one. Do it from scratch. Turn it off. Okay, let's switch over to the Atari. And this is what happens. When you turn it on, the chat's going to go away from the big screen. Okay. So there is pretty much the screen you see when you turn on the plus cart. Mm. It says plus cart, plus, buy, W, stupid. And I don't know what that little character do, do this for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, the thing next to it is your connection. Is right it now it's on? not connected. Oh, not connected. Because it's low. Okay. And when it is connected, it's high. Okay. This one does connect, but um, it didn't. Which is hap- which is happening. Um, I've seen a, a report. I think uh, Andrew Davey reported it. But that's not what we're going to look at anyway. Okay. It's not relevant right now. So you get to this and it says Wi-Fi retry and you can press a button. And mm. um, actually, we can try that. And there you go. There you go. And now it is connected. Good. And now it just has set up. Mm. Uh, that may do be due to the timing of yep. turning it on and, and how, when power gets to the Wi-Fi module. Yeah. So there might need to be a delay added in or who knows. Yeah. So uh, you go to setup here. And every time it goes between menu, they have a little plus. That's mm-hmm. like the wait menu. That also, uh, the wait sign and a it also is there when you're downloading things or trying to connect up mm-hmm. to things. Now, this cart is a very old version. He shipped me two mm. on different versions because they, you know, one might work, one might not. Mm. Gotcha. Um, but they both work, which is good. So let's just go through three ways you can set it up. Um, I don't really want to show you that yet. One is going through the cartridge. And you can click Wi-Fi setup. I'm just going to show you what we're going to look at. If you click Wi-Fi setup, I got to put this on the screen. So you do Wi-Fi setup, and it says select your Wi-Fi network. Um, it's not showing anything right now. No. Let me just. Oops. No. Go back to setup. <laughs> Wi-Fi setup. This sh- should work. There we go. So we're not. Oh, that's so funny. So we're seeing it right here, and we can see all our neighbors. We're very yeah. familiar, <laughs> very familiar with this list of yes, people. Yes. Yes. Um, and I can't show you for obvious reasons because you can triangulate us within a block if you see any of these. Yeah. Um, so if you see them, don't don't do that. And you can go left and right, and you can see at the top there it says screen one of mm. two and two of two. Um, and down the list, you'll see all of the different networks. All the options, yeah. There are some that are blank, so um, that is possible. They could be blank. Or they could be uh, your other... No, they all show up. Oh, um, they do? They could be Wi-Fi networks, but have no SSID, which is a oh. possibility as well. Okay. Sounds like you don't trust us? No. <laughs> I don't trust anyone. It's not, it's not about you guys, so don't worry. Um, <laughs> And so, I'm not going to do that just yet. So, let's go back to the main menu. Then there's another one, which is WPS, uh, which is a little bit less secure to do. 
because if you pick that what happens is there's a button on some routers mm -hmm. um what does that stand for anyway because i've never used it because it's very insecure um, but it's an easy way to connect okay. so you pretty much pick that and yeah. then you press a button on your router yeah and it's kind of like bluetooth where you're both seeing each other and you're just you can qu quickly connect to each other yeah mm. um but it automatically connects there's no permission based things um so if you're not familiar with wi-fi that's a really good way of connecting yeah, two things up quickly and then it'll exchange the passwords over it and go okay yep connected and on the other cart, which has, it is more updated than this one, there's a third option, which is called the Wi-Fi Manager Portal. Okay. And what it does, it sets up a hotspot. <laughs> and um, then you can use your phone or tablet to connect to it. Oh. You connect actually to the cart itself. Oh. So it has a web server that serves a page where you can type in the password and pick which one of the routers. So you're controlling the cart with your phone? Yes. <laughs> that is so cool. It is. And uh, <laughs> let me show you what the front page of that looks like. Plus cart for, mo no, the moles, no. <laughs> the moles are back. What, moles, what? I don't know, jokes about moles again. Oh. <laughs> Uh, so this is what there's some pretty good uh, guesses at our, our our router name yeah well you keep uh, keep guessing <laughs> girls gone perfect 14 <laughs> um, that's not a bad guess no pretty fly for a Wi-Fi I yeah, like that oh, one that that's, one's pretty good <laughs> I've, I've heard that one before so this uh, is what um, so you connect with the manager portal actually this may say WPS Wi-Fi protected setup. Okay. It's not protected. If you read up about it, it's there's it, some vulnerabilities. It's pretty rough, yeah, yeah. So if you're pretty, yeah, don't do it. Mm -hmm. If you don't have to. Anyway, this is a Wi-Fi manager portal, um, and you pick start Wi-Fi manager portal, and then you go to that um, website with your browser. You can do it okay. on your computer too if it has Wi-Fi. Yeah. Laptop, phone. Okay. And then it looks like this. Mm. And you can, if you pick configure Wi-Fi, it'll give you the list. Nice. And then you can type it in with your phone, which is way faster than using the interface in the 2600. Yes, yeah, I would think so. So I was using this quite a bit. Yeah, it must be a lot easier. Yeah, yeah. or you can configure the Wi-Fi with no scanning. And that means you type in it's your specifically the name. router's yeah. um, SSID. And you can also get uh, the connection info That's once you are cool. connected. And then if you click exit, it'll exit out from the plus carts plus because during while this is happening the plus is on the screen the whole time mm -hmm. and the exit will exit out of that so let's go back to the plus cart again and take a look at the other come on other options on here um so you can set your tv mode which is pal pal 60 and ntsc mm -hmm. we live in ntsc land but you may not um then there's a wi-fi setup which we talked about wi-fi wps connect which we talked about um ep esp 8266 factory reset which i don't know much about because i probably don't need to do it right now no. but it resets the factory settings of the wi-fi um chip chip okay. in there in okay. case there's corruption i guess yeah it happens yeah, yeah. and it's yeah. good to have those ways to just go back to basics yeah. in case things go wrong mm -hmm. Oh, uh, sure, you can allow that. That's not that bad. <laughs> um, uh, detect offline ROMs, which we'll get to. Yeah. Which you can download ROMs off of the Plus Store hmm. and play them locally on the storage on the cart without connecting to the Wi-Fi. So you can do it without connecting. And then Plus Store Connect, which I believe that has changed names since the update. Okay, so that is the main category and how to connect it up. And once you've uh, struggled with it for six months and figured out your name and convention of your SSID <laughs> is wrong and it's all your fault, yep. then you can use the plus card. Yay! Um, okay, so now we're going to go through the setup 
on this card, mm -hmm. a cart. Um, and I'm going to have to censor it, but we'll take you through the steps. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go through the Wi-Fi setup. I'm going to be right back. Um, Hold on. Okay. Hold on. I'll try to wrangle some cats too. Okay. So sensitive information. So we're going to the Wi-Fi setup. And it's not detecting any Wi-Fi's yet, but it will. Oh, it's taking a little bit longer this time. There we go. So now I'm picking mine. I'm a little bit. Okay, and then it goes to insert your Wi-Fi password. And you type it. And uh, there's six pages of characters. Um, so. Hmm. No, I'm not going to do this because you guys can actually figure out my password by the number of clicks of my my joystick. Because when you go to the next page, it defaults to the... Uh, it doesn't always default to the top, but it either defaults to the top or bottom. So, yeah, not going to happen. Um, so we're going to pretend I typed it in, and then it's all connected up. Um, but I can show you actually what this looks like because it doesn't show the SSID on here. So it says insert Wi-Fi password and you can start typing. You can go, you know, zero, one, two, three, four, five. And it does it at the top. Six, seven, eight, nine. And you can um, actually type in really long <laughs> passwords and it'll keep going and then start scrolling. I think. Oh, this goes off the screen. Never mind. So now I'm going to censor it and go back to the main menu. Come here. Kitties. Come. Back. And this should go to, yep, Wi Fi network. Then I can uncensor it. There we go. Okay. So what we're going to do now is update the firmware. Because Yay. <laughs> you can update the firmware on this cart wow. over the internet, wow. which is nice. wonderful. Very nice. Um, I'm going to be updating the firmware on both of these carts mm. um, because um, Wolfgang has set this cartridge to update to a beta uh, version and this one to a public version. Mm. So we're going to update the firmware and see how what that looks like. It only goes to the letter C still, right, James? What? Oh, it goes all the way. There's lots of letters past C. I don't know if it only went to C. <laughs> it goes to, yeah, I should have shown all the screens. So I don't think, it, I, I have updated the firmware before and I don't think it takes too long to update. Someone said you have to worry about the Galaga reflection. Hmm. <laughs> You do. Depend on the number of pixels. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Right, yep. Zero page. Yep. Zero page could go up there and annoy me. Yep. There we go. Well, it's already way too late. <laughs> I'll check it after. Yeah. I doubt it's... I doubt it's too obvious, but... Oh! Fighting! No, 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 no. Oh, it failed. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. That's a bad cat. Oh, no, this it is failed. a bad cat. We'll do it one Say more time. Say hello, bad cat. I'm a bad cat. I'm a bad cat. <laughs> Can do this uh, MP3 with trippy graphics like the Atari TV add-on. Uh, is he grumbling? No. Uh, oh, there we go. Oh my goodness. Oh, nice. That looks even different than the other the cartridge. The last time, yeah. Yeah. So it looks like it uh, is updated with a new font. So let's just take a look. So now you can see start Wi-Fi manager portal. And this is version 14.2. Um, very, very cool. Well, it's got different like colors on the different lines. That's awesome. So there's the start Wi-Fi manager portal, which I'm not going to do. Well, it does give a plus on the screen. Mm. Um, Oh my goodness. Oh, Angry Cat. And then the main screen has... Oh my goodness. 
Now they're, <laughs> now they're fighting each now other. Now they're fighting. Yeah. Okay. So um, Wolfgang sent me a message. He said, I had to make a bug fix release for the published firmware. So you have to update your first plus cart from 1414 to 1415. And you will have an update message on both plus cards, but only the second one is unlocked for the draft release and should update from version 13.7 to 14.2, which I think you can see it in here. It's 14.2. Excellent. Good. And uh, so he didn't say whether I should use this cart or the other cart mm. for trying out and playing but i'm going to use the newest one is it one you have in there yeah i'll just keep with this one okay um and uh i'm going to show off a very cool option later on um that i think they have added to uno cart or not yet okay i can't believe i got it to update now at 14.5 <laughs> so we both got it to update yeah. just have to keep trying good stuff okay so what is the plus store um right here we are in kind of where are we is that the plus store it's one second no plus store connect no we don't want that i'm already connected i think oh this cartridge may not be connected i may have to switch over actually because mm -hmm. that one is connected one second ah. that's that's why the letters should all be clearly spaced they are yes they are the There's screen tiny, grabber seems to be shifting pixels it's a tiny little line between, mm. between the pixels they're very dense mm. but there's a, a a line they're Outline. not right yeah. next to each other see and this one has uh update firmware as well mm. okay so i'm gonna update the firmware in this all right it's not what we see in the real life popular shows and uh, the a and r touching okay we'll take a look at that again mm. They're very, very close, but mm -hmm. on this, we can see a fine line. So pop, or is it's it? It's very fine. It's very fine, but it is there. Yeah. Uh, let's see what it shows here. It looks looks fine here on the capture as well. Yeah. It may be the, the low bit rate um, or yeah. the translation through Twitch, Twitch, but it is there. Yeah. It does look, it looks good. There's a space. Okay. So are we updated now? I think it worked, right? It disappeared that... Yep, 1415. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the Plus Store. This is where all the ROMs that you and other people have uploaded. Um, so the categories are My ROMs, mm -hmm. My Recent ROMs, of which I have zero, so there are no My ROMs or Recent, Public ROMs, mm -hmm. um, Popular ROMs, Recently Added, which are all great, and search ROMs. Um, so we're going to take a look at my ROMs first, which should be completely empty, which it is. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to add one in a second, and my recent ROM is going to be empty as well. Um, public ROMs, which are um, publicly accessible and maintained ROMs, which get into classic ROMs, which are 1977 yeah. uh, to 92 mm -hmm. ROMs. We'll just dive in there for a second. Divide into NTSC PAL and Supercharger. Very nice. nice. And then by alphabet, by company, or PAL Originals. Why? Oh, PAL Originals translated into NTSC. Because some people have... Mm -hmm. Because there were some, a lot of PAL that games PAL. that are only PAL. Yes. And people have uh, changed them over. And some of them are good. <laughs> um, and everybody knows what games exist. And we'll go to the supercharger just for fun. Uh, Dragon Stomper, Official Frogger. Let's just load that up for fun. Mm. There you go. That's how excellent long it takes. Very short amount of time. And we're playing the good version of Frogger. Yay. Oh, not that log. Ah, the pink one! Come back here, Princess Frog. There we go. Okay, that's Frogger. <laughs> um, and a couple uh, updates ago, there was a very cool addition 
made to the plus card and I think the Uno card, but mm. I'm not sure. If you hold to the right, which also translates into the button on the paddle. Okay. And you press reset. Mm. You can go back to the menu. Mm. And this is reportedly going to be added into the Harmony cart as well. Oh, cool. So you'd never have to turn off your Atari oh, again. Don't have so to good. turn it off, turn it back on. You just hit the reset. And it says emulation exited and it goes back to where you were. Oh, that's so, so good. good. Yeah. So good. 6K in seconds. Yeah, it's, it's fast enough, right? Yeah. Okay, so the next... Uh, so there's classic ROMs, mm -hmm. DPC, which does not work yet. They're mm -hmm. working on DC, DPC plus, um, hacks, hacks. No. organized Ooh. Omega matrix menus. Nice. There they all are. Very nice. And the two dots, of course, go up, up a directory. Um, homebrew, which is all of the course. homebrew. Yeah. And there's a lot. There. A lot, I'm sure, yeah. And it's it's um, and collections as well. Oh, and uh, 2020 new homebrews and the Atari Age Awards. Mm. So if you want to play nominated games, you know it's a, a very awesome. nice curated selection of yeah. 2019 games. Yeah. Atari Vox games, homebrew spotlight. Wow. What is that? Vage said, it's like people that they want to spotlight oh very cool so it's by developer yeah so homebrew spotlights on developers that's nice. really nice nice ntsc pal uh work in progress retired oh, oh old, old work in progress yeah that are probably now completed yes yeah uh someone asks is this d database free with purchase it sure is yes right now it's it's totally free Mm. And I don't think there's any plans whatsoever, but mm. we'll get into that. Mm. Cause I have a Q and A that I'm going to read out from uh, Wolfgang that I did with him. Nice. Um, that answers some of your questions. Mm. And Al is also in Al Nefer slash Wolfgang is also in the chat. Yes. Um, what did we get to? Um, plus ROMs, which we're going to explore a little bit later. Mm. Um, and then the actual work in progress. Um, I think that other directory is going to be going away because it says retired. Mm. I don't know unsupported work in progress things that don't work on the system um oh unholy <laughs> Zevius, yeah that's a pretty advanced game cdfj games uh don't work mm. so those are some of the games and i guess uh dpc plus some of the dpc plus games it's nice to just quickly access these games too like oh i want to try this out and oh it's great yeah um, and like they're all there at your fingertips. Yeah. That's the real plus of this. You yeah. don't have to load them on an SD card. You yeah. don't have to search for them. Somebody is maintaining this. Mm. Um, and it even looks at text files. This is a, the plus cart manual online. Uh, 23 pages. Go to the right to get to the next page. Nice. Set up your plus cart. Connect to local Wi Fi. So it's all, it's all here. Very, very quick. Of course, you have to go back to page one to get out of it. I think. Oh no, you just press a button to get out of text files. Okay. Uh, and that's public ROMs. Mm. Then you can go to pub popular ROMs. These are the ones that most people play or a lot of people play. Mm. Um, so a lot of PAL people have adopted this <laughs> cartridge apparently. Uh, jump. Yeah. Yeah. Space game. The official Frogger. I just bumped that up. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit more Chaotic oh grill. so this is it so just it's a, like a top, one main page top 10 6 15 16 how many are there 12 12 uh, 11 yeah 11 top 11 games yeah and then you can go to recently added rom so mm. if you want to check out what's what's new Yep. What are the newest games been Mid added? Blocks. Midspace, which nice. yeah, I was reading about that. The forums, it just got updated. Um, Sumo Bots, which we're going to be playing mm -hmm. next episode, I mm. think, or the one after. Um, Zombie Crisis, which we just played. Uh, the new B Blocks, yeah. which we played a couple uh, episodes ago. And so it's just again top top eleven. Um, and you can search for them. So I have no idea. <laughs> That's just to uh, sumo then. 
Ah, stop it. So S. Oops. Oh, it's almost all on the same page. <laughs> but it's not. S. Sumo. And then the last character enter. is enter. And nothing. Okay, <laughs> that, that needs some work. <laughs> you may it may only search the beginning mm. of things. So let's look for Galagon then. It looks like it doesn't search within. It only searches from the beginning. It's like one, one, two, two, three, three. Rather than one to one, one, two, one, three, one, four, and then it goes. There's different ways to search. Gala. That's good enough. There we go. There it is. Galaxian. Why did it bring up. Oh, Galaxy. Galaga. So it does search within it. Very weird. Gala. Yeah. Galaga. Nice. Galaxian. And so I got three pages of them Galaxian, Star Wars Galaxy. Interesting. At least you have the whole screen for the ROM name. You could do what I do with the FP ROMs. Yeah. So it does a, a pretty wide number of characters. Mm -hmm. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it's 6, not bad 7, at all. 8, yeah. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. Mm. I already read that out. Should have known that. <laughs> um, and you can run them right from here. So 32 is, is probably long enough yeah. to, to know what it is apparently i have to go up a bunch of directories okay next thing on the agenda okay so you can also access this through a browser as well the plus really? store yeah which is a very cool way of accessing it because you can play all these games in the javatari emulator <sighs> Um, so it's not, you don't even need the cartridge, wow. really, to uh, take advantage of all of this. So we're going to take a look at the interface okay. through the browser. Okay, so you have to first sign up for the store, mm. so which will look a little bit like this. Plus store, mm. very familiar little. Oh, where did the cartridge go? Over there. Oh, why did I put it over there? Eh, you were just reaching. Uh, um, so that's the Wi-Fi symbol, username and password. If you already have a login for it, and if you don't have a login, you can register it. Um, and so we're going to pretend we've logged in, and then I'm going to show you what it looks like when you've logged in and you have access to it and I'm going to show you how to upload your own there we go home let's just make that font a little bit smaller so we can fit more on the screen oh one second there we go okay so this is what it actually we can make it bigger this is what it looks like your home page when you log into the plus mm. store um so you've got up here some recently edited things things that have changed recently those mm. would be public uh public things and then you've got your own area for my roms mm. or your offline so if you want to add things into there so you can have them just on the cartridge without going online you can put them in there and then public roms so if you wanted to put your own roms on here you click into my roms click on plus upload a file empty bin <laughs> it's really it's Whatever literally works. it's literally empty yeah <laughs> i pre-prepared that yeah so now that that's on there we can go back to the atari and take a look at what's in my roms Yay! Empty bin dot txt, and it's it's literally empty. So it yeah. didn't even work, but yeah, because <laughs> it's zero. Glad I didn't crash it, because mm -hmm. um, it may mm -hmm. not have an exception for zero. Mm -hmm. 
This is making me want to dig out and hook up my Atari 2600. What? Uh-huh. What? You don't, have, <laughs> you don't have it hooked up? Um, no, he just plays on emulators. So, actually, I'm going to upload an actual game to okay. that. Just so we can see it load. That's very cool. Yeah, that is super, super cool. So, if you're testing out your own game it's, and you don't want it public, yeah, you can put it there. You can just, just drop it on. Yeah, that's yeah. really smart. So, let's take a look. Let me just upload one. Bear with me for a second. <laughs> Someone said empty bin is as far as James has gotten with his game so far. Lies. <laughs> I was thinking. I was actually thinking of uploading my game. Um, uh... Just to tease you guys. <laughs> No, I was. I literally you actually thought about, thought about that. Like, oh, I should upload my game, but not run it. No. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna upload uh, the new version of Sumo Bots because <laughs> I already downloaded that. I'm not finding it because it's RC Sumo Bots. Oh my goodness. There you go. Radio controlled. So NTSC. And it uploads instantly. Nice. So now I should be able to... That's really fast. That's pretty amazing. Well, that's over the internet. Yes. So, so I should be able to go out and, and back, back in. in to my ROMs. And there it is. Wow. RC Sumo Bots. Nice. And we should be able to run it. There it is. I just uploaded a file mm. from my computer to the Plus Store. Keyword. Yeah, my to your personal, Atari. Yeah. yeah, and then to my Atari over the internet. That's amazing. And now I'm playing it. And it took, like, no time. This is a 4K game, I believe. Yeah. Like, no longer than it takes to load it off the Harmony, on the Harmony oh, card. Oh, yeah. Really. Yeah. Watch this new edition. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh. Bounce. Anyway. <laughs> very, very cool. A smashing success. And we can go back into it. Nice. That's so awesome. <laughs> I love exiting like that. We will never nuts. use another cartridge again. Oh, no. No. But it's a very... <laughs> oh. Like... Oh, fell out. But think about this. Like, why I bought this... Um, where is it? Here it is. This eliminates this. This flash air. Remember when I bought this? Yes. And what this does is it's an SD card with a Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi in it in yeah. the SD card. Yeah. And I was trying to make what the what the plus card is. Yeah. In a weirder way. Yeah, in a in a roundabout way. Yeah. Um so when you load this into a harmony card, it sees the file system and you can run ROMs from it. Yeah. And this has a built in web browser so you can upload wow. your ROMs to directly wow. to the cart. And this replaces what I was trying to do. So when you're developing a game, this is going to be great for developers. You literally just drop it in. Yeah. And then it appears on your Atari, like instantly. It's it's so, so fast. Yeah. So this is going to be excellent for developing games. And now I can sell this. Yeah. <laughs> just hang on to it because it's kind of cool kinda anyway. It's kind of neat, yeah. yeah. Anyway, support dropped off for that. And they stopped selling that. And there really? is no equivalent anymore. Oh. Yeah. So which kind of sucks. But I, so I it was very hard to use. I never got it working because it was so flaky. A lot of a lot of electronics now have built in Wi Fi. They do. Like my That's camera, why. for example, will just connect and you can transfer files back and forth. So before that existed in most electronics, yep. that made perfect sense. My first non palm pilot handheld. Yeah. Not a phone. <laughs> yet. Was it a phone? It might have been a phone. Yeah, it was a phone. Um, didn't have Wi-Fi in it. Okay. But I did buy an add-on card like that. Really? Back in 2003, I okay. want to say. And it was a nightmare trying to get it to work. And you could connect up to wireless networks. Wow. And um, do things. Browse the internet. Yeah. Terribly. And do things like that. Yeah. So you didn't use up data. Um, so did we show all of the store? No. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Go back to the store. Okay. 
and show all of the store which is there's a lot more cool things going on in here <laughs> okay so there there's the rc sumo box yeah. that i uploaded uh, off screen so let's go back to the top of the store um and you can see you get 15 megabytes which is massive yeah. <laughs> for atari <laughs> atari 2600 games. yeah it's just almost endless yeah um so you can go to the public wrong which is pretty much all the games anyway that you'd need to load on those would just be for your own so we're seeing an, a mirror of what we saw yes um, yes on the, the actual other. yeah yeah atari so classic roms and you can download all these you can go yeah i want all of these games you can download all of them yeah except you have too many megs but that's okay uh no this is download locally not to your own folder oh okay so if you're like hey i want to get all the homebrew <laughs> right now there i'm downloading all the homebrew mm. this this version of homebrew so if you want an instant collection of homebrew that is uh wow. that's really really cool that's or cool. all the work in progress stuff or all the hacks mm. um that are they're curated so it's really really handy mm -hmm. are you connected there or are you disconnected Oh no! Just nobody's talking. My chat? No, everybody left. They're quiet. <laughs> they're, just, they're listening to my the dulcet tones of my voice, <laughs> which I need water. Ugh. Yeah, so much talking. Mm. So we saw all those. Um, <clears throat> so Wolfgang says offline ROMs. Put some ROMs in the offline folder up to eight hundred and ninety-six kilobytes possible. But downloading can take several minutes, uh, so for demonstration, a few ROMs, maybe a folder should be enough. Now select uh, now select on the plus cart menu, set up, download offline ROMs, and wait. So if you go and put things in your offline, and then you go on to your plus cart. It'll hold on to those. And, and click on download offline ROMs, it'll do it all at once. Mm. And then it'll hold on to them. Um, it says... ROMs in this folder are now in the plus card flash memory mm. and available even if the plus card is not connected not to the connected. internet. That's so cool. So it's Atari games on the go. That's right. <laughs> For all your traveling needs. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Got to bring your six switch with you. <laughs> That's right. Um, Ooh, perfect for um, traveling to uh, Burning Man. <sighs> I'll bring that to Burning wow. Man. No, true. <laughs> I'll bring the Retron 77. Gotcha. Because that plays everything. Yeah. Just through SD card. Yeah. yeah. True. Um, so let's take a look at the plus cart website uh briefly because it has all the information you ever need uh, or at least the start of all the information you ever need there it is uh so this is at plus cart dot firma plus dot de dot p uh forward slash pico um and the thing about the plus cart is you can make it yourself you don't even have to buy it Wow. This is really big. Ah, oh, that's not the right key. There we go. So that's what it looks like on the inside. There's the Wi-Fi adapter. And there's something we're familiar with as well already. So click on the hardware. It's those three items. And it gives you links to where to buy them. Hmm. At Blah or AliExpress. Blah or AliExpress. Breakout circuit board. That's the Wi-Fi card at the breakout board. I'm not a hardware person, so I have no idea. Mm -hmm. There's the specs, um, encasing and labeling it. So this shows you how to take an existing cartridge mm. and adapt it for the plus cart. And some additional hacks. You can tie it down if you want. <laughs> uh, denoid for that hack. Uh, there's the manual, which is online and also on the plus cart mm. available. Um, submit bug reports as well to this crazy email. Obviously an email that is going to disappear at some point. Uh, it talks about plus ROM, um, how to develop a little bit for mm. the, uh, plus cart talks about the plus store and the way everything communicates there's the plus cart down here talks to the plus store then there's plus rom backends are for games that involve a bit more than just playing the game that have more functionality like mm. if you're going to play uh, make a multiplayer game mm. 
you would need to develop a back end for it okay. that would sit on a separate server from mm. the Plus Store and control how the players uh, interface together and what how to communicate. Um, and also another page for assembling it, mm. uh, which is similar to encasing, but encasing is putting it in after assembly. Assembly should be first. Um, how to flash it, flashing the firmware, not through this, because if you're assembling it yourself, you can't flash it if there's nothing on there to begin mm. with. So this is how to get uh, the initial uh, firmware on it and some very handy links. And I think we might be using one of these links right now, mm. which is the Plus uh, Cart High Score Club, which is very, very cool. This is where you can put your high scores nice. automatically when you play games. Nice. Which is what we're going to do next. We're going to yep. finally play some games. Yeah, woo! That's what you came here for, woo! right? I'm like, no, I'm not falling asleep. You're swirling through <laughs> web pages. Where yeah. are the games? Bring yes. Oh, games. Andrew Davey. Also, there's a 3D printable version. Let's take a look at Andrew Davey's printable plus cart. And then we're going to take a look at these games, of mm -hmm. which there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Amoeba available jump. right now. Amoeba jump. We're going to quickly run through each one and try and put a score in there. <laughs> uh, so, plus cart. I think it's in the plus cart thread. His may or may not be actually. <laughs> oh, 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 yep. Okay, yep. So let me just switch over while I get this ready. So this is some work that Andrew Davey was working on um, for his uh, plus card mm, case design. Nice. That's the nice little plus in there. Very cute. Um, printed mm. on a 3D, 3D printer. 3D printed, yeah. With two different colors with some nice little notches for um, easy insertion mm. of it into the 2600. Arena Foot has high score in Amoeba Jump. Wow, that may have to be usurped. There we go. Oh, didn't work first time. <laughs> there we go. Plus. Very nice. And uh, and you can download these the uh, information to print your own from this design. Nice. Yeah. And there's there's the, the pieces. Uh, beautiful animation of it. There's all the pieces mm. that go together. Very cool. Okay, so now we're going to play some games. So, the games are uh, Atari Asteroids. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see the ranking, the score, even what game variation it uh, mm -hmm. records a game variation. That's very cool. Because I was thinking about that. It's like, well, there's different variations mm -hmm. and you can't compare scores. Not really. So, Thrust has the top score uh, right now. And then there's River Raid with some decent scores. Yes. Alan the Furs at the top there. Um, there's uh, Pac-Man 8K. Uh, JTZ Sadisteroids, which is a very hard version um, that Thomas uh, Yench uh, made to make mm -hmm. uh, Asteroids a little bit harder. And the ever fun Amoeba Jump. What lies, Arena Foot? Top person is Al Nefer. <laughs> and you can see I uh, played some games through the uh, emulator using emulator. 25. <laughs> um, while testing. Yep. Uh, Cosmic Arc and Hero, which we played on the show the other nice. day. So we're going to quickly show that you can actually play this through the emulator too. Mm -hmm. um, so you can click right from here. Ah! <laughs> that was loud. It wasn't too bad for them. It was kind of loud for them, but very loud for us. Okay. So you can play it right here. 
This is off your computer. This is off the computer, playing it through the Plus Store that I'm logged in with my username, but it will show that I am using it through the emulator rather than on, on an actual Atari. So once I finish the game, this game, um, and I'll just die, um, that will now register the score, and we'll see that. Go back, go back one, if I can, or not. Come on, go back. Oh, it opened a new thing. That's fine. So I got a terrible score. What was it? Uh, 1283. 1283. <laughs> so we'll refresh this. And we'll go down 12 pages of them. And even as the time and date, too. Wow. Oh, Deanoid, what a terrible score. <laughs> <laughs> Testing. So we go to 1283. Boom. Zero page homebrew uh, emulator user 25. And it has, uh, that is the time in uh, CET. Is that German time? Central. Yeah. Central e European time. Yep. Yeah. So it's not. It's probably Germany because that's where, that's where uh, mm -hmm. Maybe. Wolfgang's from. So makes sense. He would set it. Just say that. it's four a.m. So that would make that's sense. That's about right. Yep. So I'm in one hundred eleventh place with twelve eighty three on variation one, of which I think there is only one variation. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a two player version of it, but um, yeah. So very very cool. I can beat Dragster in one point two seconds. Now we just have to wait, have a way for people to prove it. Greenwich Mean, GMT. Is that GMT? Okay, yep. Um, so there is all the ways you can play it through the web interface. Mm. But now we're going to play it through the, the, actual, the actual system. Atari. So pick your poison. Uh -huh. We'll switch back to the Atari so you can see it. So, uh, what, nope. How do you go back? This oh, thing. no, that's where you work. That's the right thing. Oh. Uh, let's go to public ROMs. And these are, uh, these are special ROMs. So they're under plus ROMs. Mm -hmm. So you go to plus ROMs. Down, 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 there. And there's, they've been altered. So go to high score club. Altered to work and communicate back mm. to the server to register the high score. So Amoeba Jumps at the top, uh, if you wanted to play that. I'm yeah. assuming you did. Mm -hmm. And you pick NTSC. It's going to be under my name, so do a good job. Or do a very bad job. It's just the emulator, <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at that. It's got a plus. Ooh, very nice. <laughs> okay. Yellow color changed a bit. Looks like it looks greenish brighter, yellow. Doesn't it? That's very interesting. Yeah, a little bit brighter. Hmm. Oh, I was right. Central European time. Yeah, CET. So now is the opportune time to read out. My interview with Wolfgang. Do better. What? So I asked uh, Wolfgang, what is your background in terms of hardware, software, and your history with the Atari 2600? He said, actually, I'd never owned an Atari 2600 back in the day, but two friends uh, of mine did, and we played a lot together. Uh, my parents bought me an Atari 600 XL for Christmas but they didn't realize I needed a TV and a storage device too. Oh no. So I had to borrow my TV of my older sister, uh, got for Christmas, and type in the games from various computer magazines multiple times. Oh. oh. Uh, until I got a 1010 tape drive. That sounds tedious. So you type in the game, Yeah. you would play it, and you go, oh, I have to turn it off now. Oh. And it would disappear. Typing in the basic listings was a good practice, and soon I started to write my own basic programs or did some programs with my few Atari friends. Most kids had the C64. Yes. yes. <laughs> Later, I owned a C64 too, but I sold all my computer stuff when I was 19 or 20. I bought a 486 PC when I was studying mechanical engineering. 
And I think that's when most people sell it all. It's like, oh, I got to move out of the house. I got to get out yeah. all my games. Yeah. I need to put uh, you need some a, money. You need a, a, a proper computer. A proper computer. <laughs> Serious adult computer. That's right. Um, during and after my studies, I uh, slid into the software development business and had some projects with embedded system at uh, Siemens. Mm. I always did some private projects for various things like home automation or retro computers, but I never released them. So that's mm. awesome. Uh, question, what started the idea in your head of creating this type of cart? Who have, you been, who have been your collaborators in this? I had the idea, or the idea had me, about five years ago but I can't recall how it started in my head. The first test I did uh, was with the Arita board. It was nice and cheap board with Wi-Fi. I used it for some home automation projects, but it wasn't suitable for the plus cart project. So I laid the project aside for some time and started a new attempt with part, uh, particle photon. This board had Wi-Fi and the same MCU microcontroller unit like the Uno cart, which I hadn't discovered or wasn't released at the time. I had a working prototype with the fo photon. But I wasn't satisfied with the Photon, mainly because not all the GPIO ports were available because of the high price at the time. I was researching if I might use an ESP32 for the project when I discovered the Uno cart and the STM32 breakout board. And within two weeks, I finished the prototype that could be seen in the video which started the plus cart thread at Atari Age. Actually, I had no collaborators until I revealed the project at Atari Age. And even at Atari Age, it took some time until people started to collaborate. Compute was my go-to. Oh, I, Compute Magazine. Mine was Ahoy Magazine. Um, my dad always, had Compute, I remember. Compute always felt very, uh, very serious. My dad had Compute. <laughs> <laughs> and Ahoy was always fun and colorful mm. and very game-oriented. Yeah. So I, I went for Ahoy. Um, and I had a subscription to it. And I threw them all out. When I moved to that place before I moved in with you. Before you moved in with me? Yeah, mm -hmm. so to Wasson. Oh, okay. So from Langley to Tawasson. Gotcha. That's when I threw them all out. Oh, sad. Stacks. Ah. And stacks and stacks. I threw out a bunch of stuff in that move. Oh. Uh, I said, was having no SD card or, or port or USB port or a way to load games locally on the plus card part of the ethos? Or was it primarily a cost-saving mechanism? The plus card should be a DIY and not too expensive. I never like fumbling around with SD cards, and I think SD cards will die like floppy disks because there are better solutions available nowadays. My main aim was always to use the network functionality in the games, the plus ROM functions. I didn't spend too much time thinking about the way games come to the cartridge or where they're stored, but as the project evolved, it came clear that there's no need for a local storage and that community-maintained rep repository would be the best solution. And as you can see, when we transferred the the game over, yeah, it was super, super quick. And to be able to transfer a ton of those games, like, what is it, set it at 12 megs? That is more than enough to, um, to add on to the already huge library mm. there. And they can be offline as well. So you don't even need it to be online. And um, and all of this you can set up yourself. You can set up your own Plus Store, too. So you don't even need to use his Plus Store to even get this all going. Um, it looks like the Plus Cart is an open source all the way from the hardware through the software for the Plus Cart and Plus Store. Was this something you set out to do, or is this an extension of what was started with the Uno Cart? Uh, he answered, the Plus Cart was always planned as an open source and DIY project. <sighs> Uh, the Plus Store is not yet open source. It came a long way from FTP to a PHP script over to DirectUS Framework and finally the Nextcloud file sharing groupware. I'm still not sure if Nextcloud will be the final solution, but uh, for now, the Plus Store repository is very well maintained by Ram and Min uh, Prizrak, but I never planned to host or maintain a public repository for the community. It just happened. And, and glad it's there because it's like it's a big seller for this uh, oh, cartridge. Like the super awesome. The um, just being so accessible for especially for the homebrew too. Like you want the newest homebrew, it's it's updated there. It's already up there. As long as Prizak puts it up there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, 
but it's got a ton to play right now. Uh, but I never planned to host or maintain a... Po yeah. I even asked Albert if he would like to host and maintain it at Atari Age, especially because he is looking for or developing a solution for selling ROMs online, but he never replied to my PMs. Oh, frowny face. That's sad. <laughs> He's a busy guy, and especially busy right now. Yeah. He's been busy for a long time, actually, because uh, of all the games that are that coming, are coming out. out. Yeah. Oh my god, so many. Like I said, 13 Atari 2600 alone. I wish I could find the compute that had the game Devastator in it. I want to play that again. Played it a lot after typing it in. I bet there are a whole web page dedicated. There must be. In order, which games you could type in from the magazine. Like, you just download them and play them immediately. Um, question mark. Will you be keeping the Plus Card firmware updated when the firmware of the Uno Card is updated? Tell us a little bit about the relationship between the hardware and software of the Plus Card and the Uno Card, because this was developed uh, using the hardware of the Uno Card, um, or using the hardware that the Uno Card uses. Um, for the early Plus Card prototypes, I mainly used the Uno Card firmware and just replaced the SD card card loading with FTP loading. Oh wow, just swapped it over. But very soon I made the decision to optimize the hardware setup by changing the GPIOs used for the data line. Uh, the menu code had some major changes later, but most plus card improvements can be backported to the Uno card. Um, so if there's any advancements in the plus card, you can swap it over to the Uno card and vice versa. So now there are two lines of advancements possible. Um, the new 32 character menu or, uh, er, or exit function can be easily ported to the Uno cart too. Well, that answers my question that it's not in this yet. That exit. So I knew they were talking about it. Um, so I'm guessing it'll come to the Uno cart very soon. Most of those mags are online. Yes. Yes. Uh, also improvements in the Uno cart, like the new bank switching, uh, Dirty Harry implemented, have been ported to the plus cart. Uh, you should play a different game. Should I? Yeah, press to the right. <laughs> so awesome. I love that exit. So good. 8K Pac-Man. No? Does it work? Press button? Yep. Ooh. This is a different 8K than what we played on the show. This yeah, is like, I don't think... This is like Atari Pac-Man upgraded rather than a new Pac-Man. They still got some improvements. It's it's still there. So. <laughs> I think it says 1600 now. Um, what has been the 2600 and homebrew community's reaction to and support of the Plus Cart been like? I didn't expect everyone to freak out when I presented the Plus Card at Atari Age, but it took some time until people realized what it was about. Sometimes it seems to me that people are suspicious or scared that I want to kill their SD cards. <laughs> and I'm not, still not sure that everyone has fully understand what is possible with the Plus ROM functions in developing games for the Atari 2600. I mean, you can quickly realize that mm. when we transferred it and it was instantly, the game was on there. That is... 100% faster than taking the SD card out, putting it in your computer, dragging it, dropping it, taking it out again, putting it back in there, turning it back on, and navigating back to that menu too, if it's in a menu. Um, the first one I did some experiments with the Plus Card was Andrew Davey. He included high score sending and level loading on Sokobu. Then after a while, Thomas Yanch started to work with the Plus Card, decided it, it needs a 32 character menu. And Prizak has taken the job of maintaining the Plus Store repository. Andrew Davy has done some uh, beautiful 3D cases for the Plus Cart in the meantime. Uh, MK Smith said, Boon for developers. Yes. Yeah, I've never played this version. Like the first, when I was um, testing the cart, mm -hmm. I had never played this version before. And we did a Pac Man special, actually. Yeah, we did. And we didn't play this game. No. I've never seen this. I don't know where this came from. <laughs> I mean, it, it's interesting. Um, uh, a lively discussion is emerging in the last few months with Andrew Davey, Mr. SQL, and Thomas Yanch about new features and improvements at the Atari Age Plus Cart Club, which I unfortunately set up as a private club. 
<laughs> so I don't know if you can see private clubs, but if you want, if you're a developer um, or want to get involved with the Plus Cart community mm -hmm. in a... Press to the right. Oh, it's hard, eh? Oh, it's falling out. Yeah. That noise is like... The worst. It's so, like creepy. It's oh, like the creepy joystick? Creepy Pac-Man. Oh, creepy Pac-Man. <laughs> it's really funny. It is creepy Pac-Man. <laughs> it's like, it's slightly <laughs> off tone. It's like... <laughs> yep. I think this is the uh, Kurt Howe Nuki Shea Pac-Man hack from back in the day. Oh, okay. I don't remember Cosmic Arc. Why don't I think? Oh, we played it not too long ago. Where you rescued the oh, little, yeah. little dudes. Show to the right. Oh, yeah, uh, that's right. Sorry. No, I've, <laughs> I, I, uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, if you want to be in the private club, definitely uh, message Alnifer and he can set you up. Um, yeah, all the colors are really strange. Hmm, I don't know what's going on. Um, our, another question, are you looking towards a possibility of an exclusive slash non-exclusive monetized release of games through the Plus Store at some point? Uh, Nextcloud is an open source sharing collaboration platform. Basically, developers can share their ROMs with testers or customers, but there's no payment solution in Nextcloud, and currently the sharing function between users in the Plus Store is disabled, mostly because I'm not sure about the legal effects. It's very true. Because if somebody uploads a, a ROM that they're not supposed to upload, that hasn't been released to the public yet, and just shares it, then... Yeah. That's going to put a little bit of onus on him. Yes, I can go, see that. To go, hey, you're storing pirated content. Shame, shame, shame. And you don't want to get in trouble for that. Or even do it. Oh, it didn't quite suck it up. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. There you go. Oh, you're going to have to go back. Um, uh, da, da, da. I personally like software when it's free. But I do understand that some developers would like to have more reward than a pat on the shoulder for their effort. Mm. But it would also be a lot of effort to implement a payment solution in Nextcloud. That's, that is a lot, lot of effort to do that. And unless you're going to do it in a big way, and even if you're doing it in a big way, it's still a small, smaller community and it is a lot of effort. So maybe we just wait and see what Albert comes up with for Atari Age Store and maybe we can cooperate. Yeah, there might be some uh, way to collaborate the two um, the two projects, because you've got the interface ready, and he knows his store back end. And the last question, what are your short or long-term end goals for the Plus Cart? Uh, and he says, I only had short-term goals when I presented the Plus Cart project on Atari Age. I thought I would just release it to the community and go on my way happy and satisfied. So there's no ultimate end goal. It's kind of a hey, as things progress, they progress. So, how's your high scores going? Eh, meh. Eh. So we'll go take a look at... Um, no. Ooh, get in get there. In there. After this game, we'll go take a look at what you've done. This is a frantic game. I forgot how frantic oh, this game is. I remember we were doing calculations on how to get... <sighs> this isn't a magic game. Yeah. And there is a patch for it. Patch. Oh, and the patch was almost impossibly hard. Remember, like all the magic pa patches are impossibly hard. I think this uh, reflashing BIOS. Everyone wants to update, wants updates and bug fixes. As a developer, the second you work on any project, you practically own it for life. <laughs> yep, they're all they'll all come to you. It's like, hey, you touched it. You touched it last. You broke it. Yeah. Keep fixing it forever. Such is the world of IT. It's like, you touched my laptop five years ago, and now it doesn't work anymore. Uh, you need to fix it. It's your responsibility. Yeah, exactly. I think this is the spot where you die. It just comes too fast, or what was the issue? Was it, it, on... it starts to get really fast after a while. Or was it here that you die? No, you don't die here, do you? You don't actually lose a life here. Well, if you're not careful. Oh, it's on the ship. When it hits the ship, you lose yeah. a life. 
Where are the game selected and game reset switch in the star? Yellow pillow. <laughs> what? Good, are there? What are you talking about? Oh, well, there's there's a a picture here, which is a, the patents uh, for the Atari 2600. Is that what you're talking about? Um, but there's nothing. There's no reset switches there. In the yellow star pillow, there's Galaga. 7800 uh, front cover of Galaga in behind the star pillow. Uh, you need to point scum on Cosmic Art purposefully. Never collect the second alien. You can score points for killing asteroids and get energy for rescuing one alien and getting shot by planet defense. Oh, is that how you get it? The eyes of the star, they look like switches. Oh my god! I never noticed that. I'll show Tanya when she's not yeah. busy. This is a busy game. Oh, Don't cute. they look like resets? They do. Flick, flick, oh, I'm flick, dead. Flick, 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 yeah. flick. Reset. <laughs> are. are you dead? They are cute. Almost. Oh, okay. That is uh, really cool. I never... The eyes! The eyes! Look into the eyes. Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, oh it's the red thing, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, you lose it. Oh, my God. I totally forgot how to play this game. Yeah, me too. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, oh, I see. <sighs> Get shot. Ah, uh, I'm dead. Eight, nine, eighty. Not terrible. Yep. So Not let's take a look terrible. at the high score club for Pac-Man. Eight K. <laughs> How did you do in the ranking? Terrible. Oh, fourth. Oh. Yay. <laughs> Not a lot of not a lot of takers for that game. No. It is not a great version of Pac-Man. <laughs> no, it's it's an interesting yeah. version. Yeah, yeah, not the And not Cosmic the Arc third. Yay! <laughs> Yay! And for Amoeba Jump, not so great. I'm sure. Oh, I, oh no. No, Where I'm not. I'm like three thousand. I'm I'm there. Oh, thirty seventh place. Yeah, no, no, no. Oh, I, I'm not. No. I'm not as good as the people on that board. So, so good times though. Isn't that that's, that's super cool yeah. that your scores are instantly updated? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Because that cart yep. is associated and logged in to the high score. As and it's just it. boom. Yep. The tiny needs your own login. Agreed. Uh, you just have to name one of the carts for me. That is true. I've got two. So yeah. you can this can be Tanya's yes, cart. Yes, Tanya, and that number can be two. Mine cart. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's actually very true. <laughs> Maybe we'll do that. We should do but that. But we probably won't. Yes, we will. <laughs> okay. We will. You do it. You log in. You set up your own login. Sure. Okay. I can do these things. <laughs> Where are we at here? Okay. So there are three special programs in the plus ROMs folder. Um, if you want to go back and you hold right and I'll press reset. Yeah. Which I love. Oh my God. Not working. Hold right. I am. Is it connected? Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay, so. Probably not perfectly. <laughs> no, because it was in an, at an angle. Yeah. Oh, I was in it. So you go to the plus ROMs. Yep. And there's some some things here. <laughs> uh, we went to the high score club. Yep. Um, there is. These are special. These are not games that you just play. Okay. These have a back end to them. Okay. Where there's a computer interfacing and feeding information. Okay. And once, and it has like, um, I think I was reading earlier, in the cart, um, in the binary, mm. there's a line that has an IP address and it tells, I don't know the software, but it, it says, this is who you're talking to, to enable the special functions of it. So this first one is plus clock. Uh, plus clock a gets the current time in CET, okay. Central European time, nice from an internet server. Nice. So it's very early in the morning <laughs> for Wolfgang. <laughs> for Alnifer. For Alnifer. Yes. <laughs> and oh. I don't know if this updates, but I think it just gets the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you did update. I went from oh, forty-eight to forty-nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah. And. If you live somewhere else, you can adjust it. And it's 1949, as it is here. 
There there's, you go. There's our time here. Excellent. <laughs> this is more exciting than sleeping sleep. anyway. <laughs> the high score stuff really changes the whole feel of getting a good score. Yes. It does. Like it's verified. Yes. Instantaneously. It's updated instantaneously. Yes. People can see it in real yeah. time. Anybody can take a look at those high scores. Yeah, it's it has great. your it has your name there. Yeah. Like what more like it shows the date when you got it. Like yeah. everything. It's oh. incredible. There we go. And then it adjusted that. Oh, it sets it back. <laughs> so you can change this too. But Oh, uh, but once... then when the, the, the minute goes up it'll change back. Funny. That is funny. Mm hmm That's really, really cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, hold to the right. No, you're not. I am. Oh, this is not a normal program. Is Try it, it again? Work in this? Try it again. No. I don't think it works in this. Maybe it not. It may not work in this. Okay. Oh, that's okay. It's a special game. That, um... It disables it, I think. Okay, so go back to um, public ROMs. And go back to plus ROMs. And sadly, the other two don't work on this system. The online news ticker? Uh, yeah, that's PAL only. Oh, I see. And this is an NTSC system. Yeah. Sokobu does not agree with my system at the moment. Oh, okay. Um, there is a way to set it to NTSC, mm -hmm. but it... You can load it now. and I'll, it, it just doesn't display anything, but you can hear it. So it does load. I wish we could show it, but there wasn't enough time to get it all ready and working. So it just does nothing. So press the button and again. Oh, one more or two more. Okay, do it. So you can hear the familiar Sokobu music, but... It, you can't see it. You can't see it. That's a shame. Um, I think it might have to do with line count um because he does push the line count very high mm -hmm. and it does change from screen to screen mm -hmm. and my digital equipment doesn't like that if we had a crt hooked up it would be it would be a different story mm -hmm. and it would show mm -hmm. but um so if you've got a plus card and a crt this should be fine with you 276 scan lines yeah it just it doesn't like it sadly um but i'm sure we will uh work that out in the future somehow <laughs> yeah because it, 262 is kind of like the safe standard so a lot of equipment uh, expects 262 that's what all manuals say yeah um so my frame meister is probably expecting that 262, 262 and whenever a game goes off of 262 yeah shattered i know i'm sorry andrew Davey. <laughs> <laughs> um whenever it goes off 262 Equipment goes, my frame master goes, ah, what is this? This is not Freaks out. Yeah. a valid number of lines. This is not NTSC. Mm. It's it's pushing the limit. Yeah. Um, but you can hear it. There you go. You can pretend to play. See if we can win. First level is very easy. Actually, I, I believe, I, I didn't, I knew this didn't work, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and I, what this game does, it's not just Sokobu. It downloads a random level off of his back end. Oh, okay. And you can play random levels, I believe. I mean, Andrew David might want to... Um, Clarify that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the left difficulty switch, I tried to get it working over and over and over again before the show, and it just... It, all it displayed was the blue screen, yeah. sadly. Yeah, blue screen of death. Yeah, blue screen of death. And okay. the news ticker I wanted to see, but it, it doesn't display it either. It's just a blue screen as well. Mm. Okay, Darcy, are you in the chat? Now it is time. Reveal what, yourself. What everybody is waiting for. <laughs> Darcy, is Drexel, he in the chat? are you in the chat? I call to you. <laughs> Magical. And if he's not there, I'm going to message him now anyway. Okay. <laughs> um, hold on, hold on. I call out to you, Drexel slash Darcy. messaged him saying ready i said to be ready around seven or seven around seven to seven thirty um but uh it's a little past seven thirty because i didn't think it would take take this oh he is yay okay we're gonna bring bring drexel in if he's ready on the chat 
Um, and I believe it's Hangouts chat. So if you want to go call me right now, Darcy, and I will get that going. Let me turn down the volume here. And we'll get uh, Darcy up on the screen here. Darcy, I summon you. Maybe I should just call him. There we go. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Oh, and it's a Darcy is coming up. It's a Darcy. It's a frozen Darcy. Oh, it's it's a Darcy that's getting better. <laughs> Excellent. So we can see you. It's the frame rate is like mm -hmm. your frame rate is abysmal, abysmal. Oh, it's getting better. Uh, we're settling in. Oh, we're up to about thirty frames a second now. Yay! Okay. So let me turn up the volume so I can hear you. Darcy. Okay, talk. Please. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Yay. Is that better? Is that better? Much better. Yay. Where's it? What camera is he coming through? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, he's not coming through a camera. No, he can't. No. He's just watching. Okay. So he's appearing in the lower left-hand corner. Excellent. Oh, and Dr. Mookow's just subscribed somewhere. Oh, that was a while oh, ago. Oh, a long time ago. Oh, no, Darcy broke his elbow, by the way. What? <laughs> Tell us a short story about you breaking your elbow. What happened? I, uh, I, uh, I was, uh, I was pressure, uh, washing the pressure washing the roof, and, and I failed to I secure, failed my, to ladder, secure uh, my ladder properly. Uh, properly. <gasps> and it uh, fell out from underneath me as I was coming off the roof. And then I, I, I hovered there for a moment, and then I remembered uh, gravity. And then, uh, yeah, then I, I fell onto the ladder. Oh, Actually, no. first I grabbed the, the eaves, and uh, that did not work, as I knew it wouldn't. Oh. Somehow, I knew as I was grabbing for it, this is just going to break the house, and it's not going to help me. And that's what happened. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah, no. Good times. Good times. Was it just your elbow? Did you hit? Did you scratch up anything else on the way down, or you uh, well, kind of landed like on I, it? You know, bruised my knee and my hip and oh, no. other bits. But uh, oh. right. mostly my pride, my pride, actually my elbow and my pride. Like in <laughs> mostly your elbow, <laughs> mostly your elbow. then the pride. <laughs> <laughs> my elbow was hurt more than my pride, but not much. You know. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. That sucks. <laughs> um, you're not hearing an echo from Darcy. You're hearing an echo of Darcy through the microphone because mm -hmm. we have to hear Darcy. Um, you don't have those little Bluetooth things? They I would work for this, didn't but not have enough for that. time. Okay. They yeah. actually would work for that too. Oh, they would. Okay. But I, I, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Next time. <laughs> not right Next now. Time. Deal yeah. with the echo. Yeah, a little bit of echo. Yeah. yeah. I, I tried to turn down the echo. I, I think I've succeeded a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh. oh, that sucks a lot. So, did you go to the doctor or yeah. you just yeah. actually? Oh, you did. First, okay. I I told everybody I was fine, and uh, my neighbor <laughs> told me not to go back up on the roof. <laughs> that day because yes. he knew <laughs> because day. he knew that i was much more screwed up <laughs> than i thought well you still got one good arm right yeah <laughs> i still have the one good arm yeah and then i had a nap you know in the house and i came out and I, after my Sleep nap my arm off. was kind of you know stiff and then i suddenly felt like i was going to throw up and i my vision was dimming <laughs> Oh, oh no. no! And uh, my arm was uh, like uh, I was getting cramps, and the cramp would trigger my um, my funny bone, and so I'd be like, it was like I was being electrocuted. It was it was kind of funny, uh, as funny oh. as it could be, you know. And then I yeah. and I thought this isn't right. I think I need to go to the doctor. And so then I went to the, the hospital. Oh, it's good that you got. And they there were eventually. very good to me there. Were I they? bet, yeah, they did, probably noticed right away. Did, did, were they like, oh yeah, no, that's broken. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't say that. They probably, they probably had a suspicion based on suspicion. my limited range of motion. But yeah, yeah. I I don't know if I ever told you the story of my dad breaking both his wrist and his and his elbow. <laughs> oh, no. 
Oh. It was it was out east, and he was taking a carafe of coffee grounds to the compost in the middle of the winter. And in 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 east eastern Ontario, they have ice storms. Oh. So he was walking down the back concrete steps to dump it. Oh. Slipped. Oh no! One hand, the hand with the carafe of coffee grounds, flew backwards into the room, and he landed on one elbow and one wrist. <laughs> But that day he was working on a contract, like for a job, so he had to type something up. And then he spent the next three to four hours typing up this contract to my mother screeching at him because she was cleaning up coffee grounds and blood all out of the kitchen. And then after the four hours it took him to write this contract, he finally went to to emergency. Yeah. And he thought he had just twisted his wrist, but he had broken both his wrist and his elbow. Yeah. So... Um, I, it doesn't surprise me that like initially you think, oh, I'm fine. And then, then all <laughs> yeah. of a sudden you're like, no, it's not good. So that actually reminds me that I skipped a part. I did try to play video games downstairs <laughs> 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 because my hand, my, this is not the buggered one. This is the normal one. Well, my hand was okay. Like this in theory. Like it didn't, it wouldn't go like this or like this, but like this, it was, it was okay. fine if it was and in I one thought, oh, That's good for the keyboard, you know? Good yeah. enough. I did not try Like my dad, long. he was typing with like his ri his wrist resting. And yeah, uh, yeah, D-Train, he did get the job, but don't encourage him. <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, no, it was crazy. It was crazy. But uh, I'm so sorry to hear that, though. I Hopefully it'll, it won't take too, too long to heal up. Yeah. And are you in yeah. a permanent cast or is it like a, a temporary it's just, one? It's a sling. Just a sling. It's just holding it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and I have to go oh. to, you know, uh, what do you call it? Therapy. Like physio? Therapy or two. So that <laughs> oh, it doesn't boy. seize up and have a, an L-shaped arm for life. Oh, oh, no. No one wants that. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> the doctor said that you need to let it heal until the bones get sticky. And then, uh, <laughs> and then you go to bones. physio. Yeah. Anyways. Okay. That's, until that's... it starts to heal up a bit. Was it yeah. clean fracture or was it just like a hairline fracture or something? Um, Did it go through? You know, it was a black line. And oh, okay. It, it could be that it wasn't, that it looked like it was attached. It was a short piece, so it just, it, it doesn't seem to me that it's very likely that it would only be cracked. But maybe. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Ugh. Anyway. <laughs> So sorry to hear that. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's time. It is time. <laughs> but James is still going to force you to play video games, even yes. with a broken arm. So. <laughs> he, is. He, 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 he played relentless earlier with a broken arm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> the taskmaster, yeah. Um, so it is time now for the very first ever mm. uh, console, Atari 26 console, to play a multiplayer game over the internet besides the testers of course um so darcy's going to be on the other end he's going to be using javatari um oh. because he doesn't have a cartridge and he doesn't have an atari <laughs> so <laughs> javatari is going to be just fine yeah for the purposes here um so i did a little research on internet multiplayer um and the history of it and it's 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 very in, very interesting. No. I just wanted to say, have a good night, Andrew Davey. Bye, Andrew Davey. Yeah. Yeah, it's very... I don't know what time it is there, actually. Pretty late, I would think. Late or early, early or sure. something. Yeah. Yeah, he's actually... No, he's normally here and I don't know. Um, <laughs> Too much So, math. I was trying to find a timeline for internet-enabled games, mm. right? It's like, oh, when did the first multiplayer game go on the internet? Um, and there's lots of different timelines for different types of multiplayer games. Um, and it also d changes depending on what your definition of the internet and a network is. Yeah, yeah. And what it actually also, it changes <laughs> depending on the definition of even what a computer is oh. as well. Um, the most definitive one... Is that the, the one humans could, that played games? Uh. No, it's, it's more like... Um, server and dumb terminal yeah uh, because is that c multiplayer or is it just a bunch of screens on the same computer right, yeah. right. but yeah. it is multiplayer but is that it is that really different than say two tvs hooked up to the same 
Uh, I mean, they're Super Nintendo. Are each, those are True. each milestones, separate milestones. Yes, and they are. They're yeah. each they're all valid separate. milestones. Yeah, definitely. Oh, Modern Meerkat is following. Thank you for liking the show. Mm -hmm. um, the most definitive one I could find for multiplayer graphical game, at least, was something called Maze War in 1974. Mm. It was a first-person perspective maze game where you roamed around and shot each other in 1974. Wow. That's crazy. And it was the first networked game in which players at different computers could visually interact in a virtual space. Uh, oh. Initial implementation was over a serial cable, um, but then when the authors began attending MIT in 1974, the game was enhanced so it could play across the ARPANET which was the Arpanet. forerunner of the internet. That was pre-internet, yeah. So that this... was that's the first thing that kind of came around. Yeah, yeah. So that is definitely the first internet game. Yeah. Because yeah. it was on the internet before the internet was called the internet. Yeah. It was on the ARPANET, <laughs> which was just links between universities internet. at that time. Yeah. yeah. Have a good night, Miss Command. Night, Miss Command. Yep. You're about to just miss the big event. <laughs> I know it's late. Um... <laughs> And then there was a lot of terminal to mainframe games in the 70s. Uh, there was one called Star based on Star Trek, an Ocean based on ships and submarines. And 1975, there was Cave based on Dungeons and Dragons. And then, you know, we were very, all, all of us are very familiar with um, BBSs and playing multi user games dialed in. I mean, that's not the internet, but it is computers over a network. It's not a network connected to other networks, but it is a networked and dial-in mm. kind of thing. And I played multi-user games on BBSs. I mean, I ran a BBS yeah. that had multi-user games. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, there's the LAN gaming that we did in the early 90s, where we get all of our uh, computers together and hook them up in a terrible, unstable network. And IPX something something i can't remember what it's even called now it was a terrible network um remember darcy yeah yeah i remember it, it, it yeah it was it was fun at first it was kind of cool having to run around you get a ton of computers with the t's and the terminators and you would yeah be plugging each you find it just like a chair with a box for people to play on and maybe bringing in their desktops with and their <laughs> huge monitors on top of it and Oh, pain in yeah. the ass. It's like, and oh, then there was, you're not terminated. Yeah, and then there was the game of running driver. around, and half the people would have to, like, uninstall and reinstall their network cards and just keep uninstalling and reinstalling until they worked. <laughs> <laughs> just... Yes, which was <laughs> pretty much like blowing on a cartridge. It probably didn't do anything, but in the meantime, whatever was going wrong fixed itself while we were uninstalling and reinstalling network cards. <laughs> um and um, so Wolfgang messaged me a couple months ago um, saying, I have built a combat hack to test the online player versus player capabilities of the plus cart and plus ROM functions. My first proof of concept simply distributes the joystick data over the internet back end. This approach was easy to implement and is very responsive, but the posi positions of the tanks are out of sync after a short while. I've made a second version, which also distributes the Y position and the directions of the tank. With this version, the only the X position get out of, gets out of sync. And he's updated it since then. Um, I want to reveal proof of concept on the Atari Age forum, but if you want to show it before uh, exclusively on your Twitch stream, I might wait for the announcement. Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a pretty big thing. Yeah. Like, it's huge. Like, this is... I If anybody out there knows of an Atari 2600 going on the internet and playing with somebody else on the internet before this, please let me know. Yeah, it's very cool. Because there really hasn't been a cart like this before. No, to play with someone else. There's been Harmony card and yeah. other multi, like SD cards, but none with Wi-Fi functionality. That's very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how can it have, have worked, happened before? Mm -hmm. um, and maybe locally you could do it, like from port two to port two mm. and communicate to ports, but that's a local like 2600 network or something. Mm. Um, at the moment, the combat plus car plus ROM backend is located in a server in Germany, but for player versus player games over the internet, a good ping time for the game server for both players is essential. So we have to test the responsiveness from Canada. And he has since then set up a US backend. 
um, from a helpful community member. I'm not sure if I'm, I sh can name him because mm. the server will be revealed and okay. they might tie that person to the server. Okay. So I don't okay. really want to name that person Fair if enough. they don't yeah. want to be named. Um, so he said, how to start the game. Make sure both players are using the same back end. So you still have the link, right, Darcy? I still have the link. I've got okay, it don't... queued up, but I haven't loaded it yet. Perfect. Uh, the first or every odd player that starts the ROM will be placed in a waiting list by the back end. Wow. After the second player has loaded the ROM, you should press reset almost simultaneously within a few seconds because I think that syncs them up. Or at least, I, from what he has explained here, once both people have loaded the ROM, they're connected. Mm. And Darcy's joystick directions are starting to stream to me. And my joystick directions are starting to stream to him. So if we press reset at the same time, our games will start at the same time. Okay. And it's just a stream of joystick pieces of information mm. going back and back forth. Back and forth, yeah. It's like Darcy presses up, it'll send up to me as soon as it can. Mm. And we're kind of in sync. Um, you would, to do this properly, you would have to have um, packet timings and resyncs between uh, the two games. Yeah. But this is like, can we even talk level? Mm. Um, and Darcy and I did test this earlier. Um, we didn't test it with the console. Okay. We tested with both on Java. Okay. And it worked. Okay. Um, but it quickly got out of sync. Um, so we're hoping like if we do it right away, it'll work for a bit and everybody will see it mm. and it'll kind of fall apart <laughs> after that. But you'll be able to see it. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yes, yeah, so it would be exactly. It's like UDP and it needs to be TCP mm. with acknowledgements because right now it's just I don't care if you get this. I don't care when you get this. Yeah. I'm just sending you information. Yeah. That's what UDP is. Yeah. And TCP is acknowledgement. And back and forth. And back and forth. But you need a pretty yeah. good ping time to, to do that. To do that yeah. with real time gaming. And right now we're sitting at, what was it, 60 or 80? It was on 60 to 80 ping time mm. each. And then you add those together, it's you know, yeah. 100, oh. 150 kind of ping time. Mm. Uh, uh, the two tanks will get out of sync in this version pretty soon because this is a version that only distributes joystick data over the internet. And it is appropriately combat. <laughs> <laughs> the first get pack in game that came with the 2600. And it makes sense because it's not a, it's a high action game, but not like super high. Like it's not, the screen's not moving. It's a static screen. You just, Pressing forward, left, right, fire. Um, there's nothing too complicated, right? And it's a two-player game. Okay, so uh, it is, hopefully Al has or, uh, uploaded it. <laughs> <laughs> so, oops, not popular ROMs. So I'm going to go to the directory and I'll let you know, Darcy. Okay. When to load it. So it's under public ROMs. I'll put that on the screen. There, that's better. Uh, under plus ROMs. The lag could be really entertaining. Watch if they played fall down. Uh, yeah. That would be chaos immediately. <laughs> Combat. Uh, yeah. And I checked this earlier. There we go. He's only giving me the US choice. Okay, Darcy. Okay. Uh, you load and then you confirm. Uh, okay, so I am ready to reset. Wait, wait just a sec. Uh, how are we going to get the delay? It doesn't matter. Oh, we don't have much uh, of a delay. Pretty... No. Uh, for... okay. Never mind. There's not much of a delay. Okay, ready? Okay. Tell me when to go. Three, three, two, one, go. Okay, I reset. And I'm, I'm oh, blue. It's working. It's working. It's working. <laughs> I'm blue. Darcy is red. And you are experiencing history. <laughs> this is the first ever game played over the internet on an Atari 2600 console. Woo! <laughs> oh! <laughs> One small step for man, a giant leap for mankind. That's right. Which is, which is appropriate. Because, you know. 
Let's see how far we can there get. We go. Coming for you. It's like watching Mission Control. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Finger on the button, press reset. <laughs> oh yeah, the color's very different. I don't know what's going on. The color? That it's streaming? Yeah, it's More very yellow. yellow over there. Mm. That's okay. Funny. Okay, let, let Darcy <laughs> shoot you. Okay, shoot me, Darcy. I'm trying. Bit of input lag? Yeah, there is uh -oh. input lag. Uh -oh. yeah, we're, we're, shoot me! We're, uh, Falling out of sync? Yeah, because uh, my... My uh, trigger was uh, just triggering away, even though I wasn't touching it anymore. Come on, shoot me! <laughs> oh no, Darcy's having a bit of trouble driving into the <laughs> driving into the wall. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm not having trouble on my end. <laughs> I'm shooting you. <laughs> oh, you? What's your score on your end? Four. I got four, and you got one. Okay. What? Yeah. Uh, what is going on? Mine is five to zero. Yeah, we're gonna go with my score. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see, it does fall out of sync. So what I'm doing on oh, Darcy's screen funny. looks like garbage. He, he look to, actually to you him. Are actually still moving. It's just that it's out of sync. Yeah. Like you're still so there's no and playing and. It's like you're playing two separate games. Yeah, but with the same inputs at different times. Oh, that's, that's funny. Just, that's... <laughs> <laughs> See, this is very good because we can both win. Yes. You're playing, yeah, against, both won. Won. You're playing against past me, and I'm playing against past you. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, true. That's hilarious. Oh, my goodness. And Nathan Strum says, picking on a guy with a broken elbow. Yeah. Not very sporting. What's yeah. wrong with the you? The D-Train, this makes it an art project, yeah. This makes it an art project, yeah. <laughs> so there you go. There's yeah. the beginnings. The of, beginnings of it, yeah. Of uh, Atari 2600 on the internet. So what did your score end up being? 5-1. Five, 5-1. One. Five, one. Oh, good score. I, I, I got 7-0. to zero. <laughs> You still beat me somehow. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, somehow. <laughs> yeah, Nathan Storm, the machines can't send their current states back and forth, so it would be pure chance if anything synced up. <laughs> yeah. You it's... need you need um, a civilization's Atari so you can do turn based uh Yeah. Yeah. But they that need would to be good. That would See, be right, good. That right would now work. they don't talk to each other. No. They're just spamming each other with information. <laughs> and they don't care when it gets there. It's still impressive. Yeah. It's still that impressive. Is it is really funny. impressive. It is impressive, yeah. Yeah. That's funny. That's <laughs> very, very funny. Um, so congratulations, uh, Wolfgang, yeah. for this huge accomplishment. It is unbelievable mm. that uh, you've been able to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And make combat work over the internet. Yeah. Love it. It's amazing. Um, so if you want to get your own plus cart, um, you can either make one and order all the parts mm -hmm. and download the firmware and then sign up for free and it's all all good or you can uh, message uh, Wolfgang his name is Al underscore Nafur N-A-F-U-U-R on the Atari Age forums and uh, he will either have a cartridge for you and send it to you um, I don't know if you pay postage or whatever um, he may run out you may need to get more or whatever. You just contact him and he'll he'll hook you up one way or the other and let you know how to get one. And um, and then you can discover all the wonderful things that this is. And I think if you're a developer, you should definitely uh, get one mm. um, because of just of being able to transfer your game quickly, like instantaneously, over to the Atari without yeah. even turning off the Atari. Yeah. You can play your game and then exit out of your game <laughs> and then go back into it without turning it off and on because mm. of the the functionality of just pressing to the right and reset. Mm. Yeah. That's pretty great. Uh, this needs the Unreal 2600 port. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. That'd be so good. Unreal 2600 over the internet. Uh, any game that has random seeds would be kind of funny to watch with both people ex experiencing way different stuff. Yeah. They, one would have to do the seed. And then tell the other one the random seed it got, really. Mm. Um, could Darcy share his screen to check the sync? It's out of sync. That would, uh, 
Hangouts, can you share the screen? Yes. Yes. Uh, let me. And you can share. Yeah. I don't I'm know what you'll see, that. but let's do it anyways. <laughs> okay. So if we can uh, see combat in any form, then it would uh, it would work. We'd have to resync. So. I'm gonna exit. Exit. I didn't press reset. What the hell? <laughs> Just press to the okay, right. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Got. Oh, out. perfect. That's the screen. Okay, so uh, go away from Javatari. Just go home or whatever. Yeah. And uh, then get it ready. Okay, that's good enough. Let's see if we can sync up again. See if it will connect us together. It may not even load. One second. Audio's oh my god. Whoa. What? What happened? What happened? Uh, I crashed. Crashed <laughs> on my end. Ah. That's okay. It's a work in progress. Okay. Okay, so ready for the reset? Yeah. Yep. Three, two, one, go. Okay. I'm moving. I'm moving. You're moving. Oh my god, it's working! It's working again! <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. Oh my god, it's better. Zooming around. You're not it's funny that it works screen. better with the oh. real Atari than it did with the two. It's way out of sync already. It was in sync for a very short period of time. Yeah. Okay, we're going to reset again. Oh, it'll already be out of sync. You can try it. Okay, okay. tell me when you want to reset. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, I got nothing now. Oh, okay. I didn't like that. Yeah. It what did you do? <laughs> um, let's reboot the page and try it once more. Page has been rebooted. Okay. Yeah, I don't see how it could stay in sync. No, it, it gets out of whack really, really quick. Okay, ready? Three, two, one, reset. Nothing here. Oh, I can't move. Yeah. We experienced this when we were testing as oh, well. Oh, yeah. I think Where you have we to just... like clear like the cache or something. Yeah, it, it like, I think it builds up or something on the back end. Oh. And, um, yeah. And then yeah, like some members, it remembers that you're connected. And yeah. So you can't easily uh, refresh it, like to, or zero it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. But anyway, we did it, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we wanted to do. Oh, Yay. dead Atari. Yeah. Um. So very, very, very cool. Thank you so much, Darcy, for helping out. I know I did so much. <laughs> I did a lot of effort on my art part, and you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Um, so that was the big finale. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so if you want to get involved, like I said, make sure you check out the thread about the plus cart on the Atari Age forum. Mm -hmm. Contact uh, Al Nefer on Atari Age if you want your own cartridge. Um, there is a, a club as well in the club section of the Atari Age forums. Um, it's a private club. You'll have to ask Al Nefer to get mm -hmm. into that, where they discuss, you know, development with the Plus Cart. Um, so if you're a developer and want to make a game for the Plus Cart, that's where you want to be. Um, and uh, yeah, it's super cool. And I don't know how much those parts cost, but I think it's very, very cheap if mm -hmm. you're to put this together yourself. Yourself, yeah. 
um, because it doesn't have the SD part on it or the mm. USB interface as well. So it's actually, I don't know how much the, the Wi-Fi part is, but I think it's all fairly cost efficient. Um, so for, let's see, let's get the chat up. And for next Friday, what we're going to be playing and taking a look at is an exclusive work in progress update for rail slider um, which is a fun twin stick game that we haven't played in a long time and uh, it is made by uh, Lilla uh, I'm gonna get his name wrong but I'm gonna pronounce it on the show on Friday right <laughs> because he sent along how to pronounce okay, it okay good Lilla Pujenkin Pawn. okay <laughs> um, um, because I read out, oh yeah, he did Rail Slider when we showed off that demo platformer. Mm. And then I was like, oh, we should play Rail Slider again. I haven't mm. played it in a long time. And it's a twin stick shooter. Oh, neat. So you'll be on the shot and I'll be on the movement or nice. vice versa. Okay. Um, or you can try and play it two, try it two hand. Handed. It's hard yeah, yeah. doing it that way. Yeah. Because we don't have a proper two joystick. Handed joystick, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we'll be playing the new RC Sumo bots, trying that out, which we saw cool. very briefly. Cool, cool, cool. And then we'll be competing in the High Score Club, because this week they have three homebrews. Oh. So we'll be playing Miss Galactopus, which I love. It's a shooter. Mm -hmm. uh, City Defense, uh, which is like Missile Command. Okay. Where things are coming down, you have to shoot them. Yep. And Dog on It which we uh, played oh, uh, yeah, a couple, it's month, fun. month or so yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Good stuff. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so we'll be competing in another high score thing. Excellent. <laughs> um, so that'll be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're very welcome, Alnifer. Thank you so much for bearing with me while I tried to get this hooked up to my mis <laughs> misbehaving router yeah. for months and holding off on the combat, revealing that to the public. Yeah, that's very cool. Um, it is TCP, but the plus, uh, plus ROM backend distributes just the joystick data. So yeah. it's just like, blah, joystick, yeah. joystick. <laughs> he's pressing up. I'm not going to tell you when he's pressing up, but he's pressing up. <laughs> so, it, yeah, it's funny. It does send a collection of moves. Oh, that's cool. Um, what's with the occasional screen glitch? I don't know. And I haven't had, I time, to si I haven't yeah. had time to sit down and take a look at that. Mm. Um, it might be my wiring because it's kind of a rat's nest. It mm. might be that. But I have to disconnect things and connect and them up. Reconnect them. Because it's been getting a little worse. Mm. And it might be interference from lights or something. Yes, I do want the Atladin Super Twin 78. I really, really want it. <laughs> it's a fortune to get into Canada. And, it, mm. and it's not a cheap joystick to begin with. And it's this big. Mm. And I have no room for it, too. So there's many, many things, why, more reasons why I can't I like that it. he looked at me when he said that, too. <laughs> and there's no room for <laughs> and it, And there's too. no room for it. We'd have to get rid of a cat. Yeah. <laughs> To, <laughs> to store it. Uh, which one? And you have to decide. Oh, no. You have, you have to decide which kitty to, to get rid of. <laughs> Sounds like it would be a good Hanukkah present. Yeah. It would be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then on the Tuesday afterwards, we're going to be trying to go for the astronomer patch, which was voted on by you guys last episode. So good luck to me because I've never even got close. 12 is my highest score and you mm -hmm. need 20 so hard but Ugh. it's but it's one of those games where it's luck it is there's it's a like, lot of luck here's in an game. easy here's 20 here's easy, easy stars easy passes. Yeah, yeah or here's 20 difficult passes yeah yeah um so that is it for tonight thanks for hanging mm -hmm. out ground trooper al nefer d train 37 captain classic uh nathan strum 06502 dr moo cows flackets dan avc arena foot Milton Bradley, mm -hmm. you make some Splendid good nut. board games. Yeah. <laughs> um, Splendid Nut. Modern it's, Meerkat. It's yeah. Kev73. Ooh, Modern Meerkat. Uh, Miss Command, Andrew Davey. Uh, Drexel. Drexel. Yay, Darcy. Who's like, oh, I can't see where he's right. There he is. There. On the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, who else? S. Ramirez, I think Cafe I said. Cafe Man 2D. Great Offender. I supposed to was in there. I supposed to. 
uh mk smith charles wheeland so many people yeah yorgi's castle and mr fix i, I think i said it that's as far as it scrolls back. Mm -hmm. And Thunkist, who snuck in. Um, so we'll be back on a Friday. Yes. Same time. And then it's Darcy's back the Friday after. after. In the person, in the flesh. Yes. Where we can reach out and touch him if we're so inclined. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks, thanks Darcy, for uh, helping us out today. And thank you, everybody else, for hanging out. And we will see you on Friday. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.